Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and with us, Carl Dilkington. Can't. <laughs> This is the worst chair I've ever sat on. And I've sat on some fucking chairs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, are we started? Mom, mom. Are we ready? Are we recorded? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Right. Hello and welcome to a brand new series. Oh. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> I was getting it. I was getting it all He's fired getting up. excited and motivated. What are you talking one, about? One, 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 one. Just seems a bit loud, that. Well, well, you should have sorted that out. Look at that. Look at this, Carl. This is a shambles, this mate. This is a... People have paid good money for this. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, are we ready now? Yeah. Well, come back here, then. We're doing a podcast, you dopey bald twat. What really? are you doing? Right, go on. We'll just have to go with it. What no. are you up to? No. Fucking Davros. Hello? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just sit like that. Right, okay, ready? So it was your problem. Oh, Jesus. It's just this carpet. Right. right, ready? Yeah. Hello, welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. St well, no. <laughs> <laughs> I was so excited to say hello. Okay, right, okay. Hello, and welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is Carl Pilkington. All right. The boys are back in town. What concerns me, is this the tail end of the last series of podcasts, or is this a brand new comeback? What I mean is, is this take that when Robbie Williams had left, they sort of limped on with a couple more songs and then called it an end, or is this the triumphant return of take that? This is, I mean, no, I, I think we're a sort of, we're like a, a, a great rock group who's just been away for a couple of years doing their their fifth album. Right. Is it the fifth? The mediocre well, fifth album. The media, yeah. We've done, hold on, one, two, three series. We did the specials, which is like a fourth series. Yeah, this is like the, this is like the fifth series. Here it is, the fifth series of podcasts. Although we can't call it podcasts because, um, they're audio books because we're charging for them. We're not even going to give them away free first, then charge for them because, um, in the past we've given away free. Oh, and then we put them on iTunes, a back catalogue. You can, you can buy them. If you missed out on the last year when they were free for a year, now you can pay a pound. People are c complaining. Last time we gave it away for free like a year later we sort of put it up there people can buy it they're going oh this was once free well yeah it was once free so we did our bit we gave it to you for free and now we're charging for everybody to get you should have bought it for free I can, we can't do any more if everyone did that i mean it would just be a better world wouldn't it give it away for free maybe and then charge for it if you're too late so we're not even going to give this one away for free because they they annoyed us didn't they carl yeah a little bit um well uh we actually did a bit of planning for this as well. We thought, we're going straight to a paid audio book. Let's plan it. Let's not just come in here and shambles. We've booked a studio. We're in a nice little studio in West London. Our own little... It's all to ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, we're just... Look at right the right. chairs. Look at the chairs. Yeah, Steve didn't get a good chair, but... Yeah, well, yeah. I've got a rubbish chair. Look how big I am. I have a giant sat on a... Like a kiddie's chair. <laughs> and you've got... Look at you. You're almost half asleep, as usual. Carl, you, I don't know why you need a good chair. What do you mean? But why do you need a good comfy chair? Look how you're sat. This, this is you can be perched on a stool, you can be perched on a box. Is, why don't we swap chairs? Well, why do you want, what's wrong with you? Cause it's, look at it! Is this how you normally behave? You always get your own way at home. Is this how it is? Yes, oh. in my house I do normally sit in a chair that I find comfy. Will you be happy if I swap chairs? Yes, I'm I had to get him a special chair. I bought some chairs for the office. I bought them. He went, oh, don't like this one. So I went and got him another one. It was actually cheaper than the one he had. He said, yeah, I like that more. Well, there you are. That's a lovely happy ending. You ended up saying. I didn't money. give him a happy ending. I did not give him a happy ending. He just sat there and we worked. There was no happy ending. Do you get this? Will you be happy? I think I would be happy. What do you mean? Certainly. Think it's like Goldilocks. Are you going to be happy with this or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you let me try it on for size and see how we how we get on? This is. I feel guilty charging for this. <laughs> well, let's just try it. How's that, sir? Is that okay? That's a nice chair, actually. Well, you're gonna That's move the chair, so you're gonna chair. sit. Oh no, it's the whole dynamic. No, I'm gonna move the chair. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you got me. I can't. You can't. It's got to be me and Steve one side, and the little round twonk the other. Okay. Right. Okay. We're gonna start any minute now. We had a little cup of coffee. There's some Kit Kat in the fridge, isn't there? Right. We thought we'd feed Carl a little Kit Kat later. Because he's like, he's there, he's sort of pressing the buttons, he's keeping an eye on the computer and everything, and he's like a doctor. He, a doctor doesn't swab his own forehead, so what I'll do is I'll get a little Kit Kat later, I'll dunk it in Carl's, um, tea, and then I'll feed him a little Kit Kat. Look forward to that. 
Yeah. Mm. How fussy was Carl as well with the tea? He talks about oh. you with the chairs. He was looking at what tea bags they were. I went, oh, PG tips. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a bit on. strong, PG. I can't believe you've got favourite tea bag. What's your favourite tea bag? Twinings, English breakfast. Can you really tell the difference? Yeah, I can. I've done like a little test on it because my mate was saying, oh, it's rubbish, it's all in your head. Mm. And he had a selection of tea bags. <laughs> uh, we had nothing else going on. He said, right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make three teas. And he used Tetley PG Twinings. Oh. Straight away, I got the Twinings. Straight away. Party oh, time. Like, yeah. Party time in the Pilgerton household. Oh, man, I like Oh, it. when was this? How old were you? Oh, it was just going back a, a few months. I was like, uh, it was like a Jilly Goulden. Just sort of, uh, having a little. Th you can tell by the smell of a PG. Because it's strong tea, that. Mm. Very strong. Uh, Twinings is quite, uh, fresh and light. <laughs> Uh, Tetley was just the one in the middle. Can they get their money back? If they have paid for this, can they get their money back and I just love my money back. illegally download it with the this people isn't that- This is for the thing, is it? We're just having a chat. Oh, we can tell, like, like the tea bags, we can tell the quality podcasting from the rubbish, can we? We'll take this out. If this is still in, then it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, uh, let's start now. Let's, let's start. Right. Let's concentrate. Um, so, episode one, I thought what we'd do, um, is, Maybe go over some of the things that have happened since we met, as it's the final series. We met in about 2002. I thought we could think of how the world's changed in those, uh, seven years. Six, yeah. seven years. Well, certainly, uh, the big news is the endless threat of terror. Terror, the war on terror. That had, that had kicked in when we met Carl all those years ago. Well, I walked into that room. We were given this little, what, what I, at first I thought was a little slack-jawed chimp, gimp, sort of techno kid. It turned out that he wasn't very technical either. Didn't even have that. No, didn't even have that, just a gimp. And he opened his mouth and we thought, we've struck gold here. This is like a, a vein of uh, pure idiocy. Um, so that was going on. Uh, podcast hadn't been invented. That's new, isn't it? You were very much a pioneer, if you don't mind me saying, Rick. Thanks, mate. The iPod, we've talked about the iPod, um, Carl not impressed, I think it's a, just an amazing piece of design. No, it is, it's good. Yeah. I've always said it's, it's, it's good, now I've got one. I was listening to it on the way here. Yeah. But all I'm saying is... How many songs have you got on it? Because you said there's only about three songs you'd want to hear. Well, what I've, uh, I've probably got about, we got about 400 on it now. That's right. Um, but there's no, there's no sort of filler. I don't just go putting full albums on it. No. I handpick. Yeah. Um, but what's odd is I find that I'm sort of buying stuff that I wouldn't normally buy if it was only on record, which is good but bad, because I've, yeah. I've got a lot of clutter now. Do you know what I mean? Well, you said you haven't. You said you haven't got a filler. So I thought you were cherry picking. No, but what I'm saying is, like, yesterday I bought some Dr. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> uh, when was the last time anyone thought, I'll tell you what I haven't heard for a while, Dr. Hook? <laughs> well, I, I heard it and I thought, oh, I used to like that one. My mum used to have that one when she was doing the Sunday dinner. I thought, I like What that. one? What did she used to have on? Dr. Hook. What, every, every Sunday? Well, it's just, uh, that's the memory I've got of it. I'm cooking the turkey, put the Dr. Rook on. It just, it just always on, uh, and some other country western singer. My mum was Jim Reeves, she always put Jim yeah, Reeves on. Yeah, she liked on. Jim Reeves. Yeah, I like Jim Reeves. Um, my parents didn't like music. Silence. Oh, no. <laughs> my house. It was, constantly, <laughs> never put record on. Oh, wow. Uh, Su on. Our house, Suzanne, it does her head in when she comes round to my mum and dad's house, because there's music on in every room, all different. <laughs> and my mum's got into this fella <laughs> called, uh, Roger Fender, or something. Some country western singer. And it's on all the time on loop, the same song. You said the sheep across the road has started to sort of hum to it. It's on that much. Brilliant. Think of looking over and seeing some sheep humming. No, he's Roger just, Fender, whoever he is. I don't, I, I think that's his name. But, uh, but yeah, so I've bought some Dr. Hook. Yeah. And, and what I'm saying what is- What did you buy? What Dr. Hook did you buy? It's called, um, who's called, if not you, it's called. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. And, uh, I wouldn't have bought that if, if I had to go to a record shop and- Well, no, it, it wouldn't be available. <laughs> They'd go, what are you talking about, mate? Have you got that one by, mate, can you leave the store? Well, yeah, but that's a good thing, isn't it, now that you're being opened up to a whole different- Yeah, uh, but it's that thing of, of just That's what excites me most, exactly. a back catalogue yeah. that you can, yeah, without yeah. trying it's, to go into it. But, but I'm just saying that that's what happens, isn't it? If you've got a space for something, you fill it. And that's the problem. If my, if my iPod wasn't an iPod and it was a cassette, Dr. Hook wouldn't be on it. He wouldn't feature. He wouldn't be on the cassette. Elvis what? would be. Yeah. Uh. It's the big boys. What's wrong with having a space and filling it? I mean, there's a space between your ears, we'd love to fill that, but. Um, just because 
is stuff, is normally stuff you don't need if you've got too much space and you're filling it. It's like Ricky's house. You've got stuff in there now that you want to add in a smaller flat. You've got dead owls and stuff like that. Right. Dead owls? Why are you buying dead owls? No, it's an antique thing. It's an antique stuffed owl and I was assured it died of natural causes of old age yeah, and then sure. Yeah, it looked better. a good nick. It didn't look yeah. u- upset. But dead owls suggest that they just fly into the room and I just leave them there. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Like they, cr- they crack their head. But on, what, you're on just sat in your uh, dressing gown constantly drinking yeah. gin. Oh, Jay, there's another dead owl. <laughs> Clean up. Feed it to the cut. Feed it to the puma. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. I haven't got room for a, I haven't got room for a live owl. Never mind a dead one. <laughs> so that's the difference and that's the same with an iPod, isn't it? With an iPod, because you've got so many gig, you go, what will I have? Well, yeah, but Ricky's not, s- Ricky's not sat at home looking at an empty space in his flat thinking, I need to fill that with something. I think he would be. What would be there? If that dead owl wasn't there, what would you put there? But you've picked on one thing. You've picked on one Well, that's all you small... can do. I'm just picking on an example. What else do you want me to pick? I'm just saying I have not got room for a dead owl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd never look at one in a shop. I'd go, I can't, I'm not going to buy that because I haven't got the space for it. But why are you obsessed with, like, someone trying to pressure you into getting this dead owl? I, wonder what, I, I mean, it, it seems a weird thing to shout, I have not got space for a dead owl. No, but if I, say if I had an urge to see a dead owl. Right. Natural History Museum, loads of them. Right. I've never seen one and gone, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to the museum, I want one in my house. That to me is like, right, Susanna, have we got everything? Have we got a dishwasher? Yeah. Washer dryer? Yeah. Ironing board? Yeah. Right. There's a bit of space there, is there anything you want? Then, if it's like, dead owl? Alright, we've got the room for it. But the way we're, <laughs> the way we're living now, we've definitely not got room for, for a dead owl. That's all, that's all I was saying, and to me, a dead owl, I, I'd like it to be part of, um, estate agents' patter. <laughs> and there's a lovely space there for, uh, you can fit in about seven dead owls. They don't, they don't do about square footage anymore. It's, uh, 6,000 dead owls. Um, you idiot. Well, um, yeah, I'm still not convinced by this idea of, uh, the space has got to be filled. You know, people aren't, it's not, people just choose to buy things and fill up their house with those things because they, they give them pleasure. It's Most things I, we've got are junk. If, if you didn't have junk, all you'd have, is a, a, a cooker, um, a, a bath, um, maybe a sink, a bed, and that would be it. That anything else, a, a television, isn't necessary, is it? You seem to think that people should live like, you know, kind of 19th century mining communities. Well, no, but these, <laughs> like, a few years ago, people worked this out, didn't they? They all went minimalistic. Because they Say said- what? Say what? Minimalistic. So one more time. Minimalistic. No. No. What, the, what's, what letter are you starting with in that word? M. Okay. Where are you going on from there? Mi- minimum. Well, it must be mi- it must be minimum. Yeah. So, so it's what that minimalistic. 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 No, 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 no. You're Look, popping... you know what I mean. No, no, wait. You're popping in an M where there should be an N. Minimalistic. You put in two M's when there should be one M, right? Minimalistic. Mi- minimalistic. Yes. Wow. Woo! Oh, right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> That's so... the end of the uh, the first episode. <laughs> it's gone well. Um, so anyway, a couple of years back, everyone went. Yeah, that was that was the that was the trend, wasn't it? But we've gone back to being clutter clutteristic. The way I live, like I've said to you before, it's the old three month rule. If something's not used over three months, chuck it out because it's not needed. So suitcases. What was that? Yeah, suitcase. No, he uses a suitcase every two weeks. He's off all the time. Uh, most stuff, most stuff at clothes. Well, okay. if you don't wear a piece of clothing in three months, it's gone. But why haven't I wore it in three months? Well, because maybe it's a, a uh, it's a suit or a tuxedo and you've not no, been to any fancy I have, balls. I don't have any clothes like that. I wear the same things anyway. I throw clothes away every three months because I get too fat for them. <laughs> so, you know. But it does seem to me the way you talk, it's like you want to live, as I say, like some kind of 19th century pauper with a big tin bath in the lounge in the one room in your house and all the family bathe in it. And yet you wouldn't be happy with well, that, Well, maybe, would you? maybe. Well, I've told you before about that's, that's something I said when I was younger. What? what did you say? When I was younger, um, I think uh, I was having a bath or something, and I said to me mum, "Oh, remember when I was in like that tin bath in front of the fire?" Yeah. She went, "What?" And yeah. now that's strange, isn't it? That you're saying I'd be happier with that back then. So it's like that was my past life. Well, hang on, hang on. Whoa, we haven't finished whoa, yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. What your, do you mean? Your mum, your mum said what you're talking about. You said how old were you? Uh, I must have been a kid if I'm having a bath and my mum sat there. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know how you operate. I assume you were, but how old? Must have had time to have a bath. As you get older, you don't have as much time, do you? 
So I'd say five. I love the fact that after five he didn't have time for the bar. <laughs> no, he's just he's so busy. Carl, we've read your diary. One day it was simply went to the cobblers and back. No, but so you had time to have about nineteen bars. No, but as you get older, you sort of go. I'm time to sit in a bath. Where's a kid? It's something to do. You're like staring at ants. When have you ever been too busy to have a bath? One, you're never busy. Two, how can you be too busy to wash? It's like saying too busy to eat. Breathe. Got to breathe last night. Why? I had a bit of work to do. What point are you making? So I'm just saying. This you is not an anecdote. You said that that I'd be happier back in 1800s or whatever. But what are you yeah. so what are you saying that you didn't really have a bath in front of the fire? You yeah, mean this I... was a glimpse of a past life? Yes. Is what you think? Yes. This is you, this is just such a non-point. <laughs> this is just nothing. This is this, if you'd said, well, then I went off to see one of those people who regresses you, and although it was a load of old bollocks, he regressed me, and it turns out I was the king of Sheba. I love those things, people. Everyone thinks they've lived before, right? Mm. Did I tell you that um, there was a, a documentary um, about these people in um, uh, Los Angeles that, that they'd lived before and they'd come back and and uh, they did they did a, a come as you were party, so they went as the people in their previous life. All of them famous. Of course they were. Kings, queens, uh, leaders of men. Not as I was a stable hand, I forget my name. Right, two Napoleons, one of them's lying. <laughs> I mean, it, absolute twaddle. <laughs> we we're talking about things that have, uh, happened since we met. We've, uh, we've done podcasts and we've done the iPod, we've dismissed that. Um, See, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, where he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no one's picked up on his ideas, like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, c cat mops, I don't know, it wasn't yours, nor was the tie, was it? The stupid tie. What's that? What's the one about the tie? Um, The tie that had a pocket. <laughs> Loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that, that's something I, I saw somewhere, but it never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet. It's such a good. It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a carrier bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie <laughs> packed with stuff. You were. Right, imagine. All right, Frank. Stuff. Nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um. <laughs> this ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck. What for? Um. Don't know. Well, I tell you. What? Um. Uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet, and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Well. All right then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. Now, I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie around your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? It's a pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, that's weird. What are you so I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but, but, hang on, hang on a minute. It's a hot day, isn't it? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. <laughs> well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. <laughs> a tie at the moment is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're going to be hot, carry something, hands free, and everything's always there. A bag, you put stuff in a bag. You put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags. That's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off. Oh, where's the bag? A tie. When you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. Go. <laughs> oh. The country would look smarter. Right, you have pockets, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got a spare change. Yeah, okay. Which, uh... You're rattling around like a, like a cow in Switzerland, right. just like... I've got a spare change, I've got, uh, like, my debit card in there. Right. Uh, maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. Okay. Uh, a pair of scissors, if you want. Amazing. <laughs> that's whatever. safe, isn't it? Oh, that's a, a good place to put it, just around the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and the, near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards. Brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. So when you when you're on the beach and you just got your speedos on, <laughs> pop a tie on, go to the shop and pop a tie on. Well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times. But I'm just saying, if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's all right. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie, you've got clothes with pockets. And it's going to be weighing your neck down. If, I mean, come on, John. Don't go mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what else has happened since we met? 2002. Um, gay marriages. That's, uh, that's kicked in. Mm. Thoughts? Yeah, they've happened. Are yeah. they popular though? I mean... Well, amongst gay people who want to get married, they're very popular, I imagine. What's the point of it? You know, I suppose... They want to feel that 
there's an equality. But is it just one of them things where they wanted it because they can't have it? Do you uh, know what I mean? I think any excuse for a fancy dress. They like, they like to dress up. They love a press tent. See, I just don't understand that, that what's it, I mean, who gets, whose name do they use? Whose surname do they go with? I don't know. There's a problem. Just creating problems, I always say that. Any problem solved is a new problem made. <laughs> <laughs> Gobbledygook. <laughs> oh, any that. problem solved is a new problem made. Yeah. Like I said that time when I was in hospital, and, uh, you know, I remember in the 80s everyone was going, oh, there's not enough hospital beds and all that. When I was in hospital with, uh, what's it, kidney stones. Yeah. Um, loads of beds, not enough pillars. So that's the way it works. It sorted out the bed problem. <coughs> they give me a bed at night. I was going, I haven't got a pillar. You had to go off and get one. They brought it back. It was still warm. Oh. <laughs> that had been between it. Under a bed head. So that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like, you, you get all the beds, new problem. Where's the pillars? <laughs> Don't solve problems. Don't solve problems. Brilliant. What do you make of the, um, this big problem in the church? Not wanting, uh, gay people to be priests. Does that concern you? No. No? <laughs> it's a problem if you're gay, and it's a problem if you go to church and you don't like gays, but I, I don't go to church, and I'm not gay. There's certain problems that just go over your head. If you were gay, Carl, what would you do? Well, I do what all gays do, I suppose. What the, what, what's that? Whatever it is they do. I'm just saying... Well, well, you can just say... What if well, you I'm didn't... not gay, so I don't, I don't know. So, um, getting, uh, gay marriage, um, would you, uh, ever go through with that? What, if I was gay? Well... It's hard to answer, isn't it? How can I answer it if I'm not gay? I don't know what I'd do. Well, no, I might no, not okay. look like this, I'd look totally different if I was gay. Why? Even though it's me mum's what's it, and me dad's jeers or whatever, it's still, I'd still, I'd look different. <laughs> Because gays do, you make more of an effort. Look at me. I won't survive as a gay man. Maybe that's why I'm not one. <laughs> right, Carl, I'm going to give you a scenario though, okay? I'm going to do a test. Um, would you rather, so you're not gay, okay, this is a real you, right? Um, uh, someone put a gun to your head and goes, right, okay, Carl, you've either got a merry little gay fella, there's a little fella here, he, he loves you, he's liked you for a long time. He goes, hello, Carl. You go, all right, mate. He's a lovely bloke. Um, I think he's, he lives in Brighton. I think he's in advertising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a surprising. sports car. He's, he's smart. He looks lovely. Um, pink shirt, white suit. He's great. He's very popular. Got tints. It always looks good. Mm. Right. Lo lovely tan. Um, he's about 38. What's his name? Uh, his name is Graham. Oh. Yeah. What's he um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he goes, hello, Carl. And you go, all right, Graham. And, uh, and someone suddenly bursts in and goes, right. You've either got a marry Graham, he puts a gun to your head, he goes, right, you've either got a marry Graham, okay, you've got to tell all your family. Well, you... no, I'm not going to marry him, am I? What, well, whoa, 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 get all the choices. Well, I know, I know one of the choices, and I'm not happy with that choice, so you go with whatever else. Well, no. So what's the other option, Rick? Well, okay, so you marry, you marry Graham and you yeah, do- I won't be marrying Graham. You do all the things in the bedroom. Why's that happening? Well, you're married now. You're married now, and he you wants to consummate the marriage. He loves Even you. under marriage, you can't do that, can you? You can say, hang on a minute. Well, no. Well, I, don't, I don't know why you've married Graham. No, but you want him to be happy. Him. You want him to be happy. He's giving you a lovely house. Yeah, but I'd say, Graham, hang on a minute. You know the score. I'm not into this. No, I went he along with know. it because you didn't want a bullet in your head. No. <laughs> now, if you love me, will you stop doing that? <laughs> stop doing what? What are you doing in the bedroom? Well, no, just, uh, the, you know, you have a lovely life. You do your own thing. You do this, right? Podcast, do your little books and that. Little, um, you know. Uh, and uh, Graham goes off, he does his, and he, he comes back, he goes, oh, I've had a day. Goes, What's the matter, Graham? And you go, you just sort of massage him, he's just like, you go, uh, oh. I'll go with the other option. Well, wait, Carl! So you're going, oh, God, oh, you say I've made you some pork chop. He goes, oh, you're a darling, right? It wouldn't work, though, because you're putting two people together who don't want to be together. Well, Graham wants to be with you. Yeah, Graham yeah, loves you. Relationship's two-way, innit? And I, yeah. I, and I don't, I mean, this is a made-up man, and I know I don't like him. <laughs> <laughs> That's just homophobic. No, it's not. He's annoying me. Why? He's a little yeah, bit Why saying, is he annoying well, you? Just the way he looks after his body. Yeah. He's saying he's tanning it, he's having yeah. a massage. And I wouldn't be doing all that, so it wouldn't last. The relationship yeah, wouldn't work. He's talking to you, he's talking to you. No, it doesn't work. Opposites attract, okay? Not to and that point, it doesn't. He's good to you. Uh, he's really, though, he, he, he's, oh God, he's, he's faithful. Um, he's got a good job. He's got a really good job. Um, you get invited to really nice parties. It's just him. I don't like him. 
Well, yeah, he's, 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 no, that's a shame. He, he absolutely loves you. That's he's that happens, doesn't it? It happens that I remember right. being at school with a girl who really liked me, and I was yeah. like, "It's not going to happen, Sharon." No, no, no. The, the first, the first, the first. And that's day. Sharon, not Graham. <laughs> so the chances of me letting this Graham move in. <laughs> well, you've moved in with him, right? He's got a lovely, bigger, mm. got a uh, six-bedroom house. Of course he is. And, um, you, you move in with him, right? For the first day, you go, oh, I'm not happy with this, because you're thinking, oh, my God, it's a, oh, God, first day in marriage, what's it going to go? He goes off, he g gives you a peck on the What's head. the option? Well, what wait! What's the other choice? Well, you don't know! Yeah, okay. So, he comes home, he goes, oh, he's bought you a lovely little ankle bracelet. Oh, with with, with Carl. Carl, love. Graham, I need a word. <laughs> I go, what is it? What's up, what's up love? <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter? Go, I'll be, look, I'll be Graham. Right, okay. I'll be Graham. What's the matter? You look tense. This is all, uh, it's, we're living a lie, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just the alternative is so much worse. What's the alternative? Uh, no. What is the alternative, Rick? I think we're all waiting for that. Well, marry a chimp. <laughs> marry a chimp yeah unless you either live with a chimp in a tree or marry graham your family are going to get killed they're going to someone's going to shoot him right so you have to decide what you want to do do you want to go and live in a tree with a chimp and eat nothing but bananas and just live a chimp world okay yeah or woo graham you go down there you chat into him you're, in a, you're just in a, a club right you're there. But right. who's watching that I'm staying with Whoever this evil the person, person is. is right, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, well, on, where's he watching from? The, the evil, the evil person's going, right, he goes to that club, Saturday nights. Don't, don't bother going before midnight. He won't be there. Right, so you get there, you walk in there, it's 1am, and he goes, that's him over there, in the pink shirt, dancing. Okay? Right, he, would, he wouldn't like me. <laughs> he would. You go, no, you go, well, this uh, is it, you've got to win him over. Look at you! Look at your lovely shaved head, hairy arms. Oh my god. I mean, you are more suited to the chimp, but now you'll go down a storm, right? You go down there, you've, you've got, you've got a little vest on, leather trousers. What would you say to Graham? You've got back. to go over it. You've no. cut out, you've got a bought a leather pair of trousers and you've cut out the back. Okay? There you go in. Your ass is showing. You've got, you've got a freshly shaved head. You've got a little white vest. Okay? Mm. Has he got all this on? Uh, no, he's got, uh, he's got like a little pink Ben Sherman, uh, white trousers and, uh, espadrilles. Right, I'd dance over. Yeah? I'd yeah. say, uh, you Graham and go, yeah. Oh, hello. Who are you? I'd say, never mind, you haven't seen a chimp about, have you? <laughs> <laughs> hello, welcome to episode two of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. Hi. Oh, yeah, I just, I just. I just feel bad about Graham. I feel sorry for don't, Graham. Don't feel sorry for Graham. Well, Graham. he was a nice guy, and he's, he absolutely- just so badly treated. Took you into his home, it was gonna give you everything, and you just didn't appreciate, and was saving your family's life. And you just- Yeah, I but just, I went, I went for the other option. There's no point, I, all I'd be doing is letting Graham down. And as much as I didn't like him, I don't want to ruin his life. I don't know why he didn't like him. He was just not my type. He was a lovely you know, guy. He wasn't a lovely guy. He didn't give Why wasn't he a lovely time? guy? Just his, just his ways, you know. I mean, you, you, you bond with some people, you don't with others. It had nothing to do with him. You barely even had a conversation gay. with him. Yeah, but you click straight away with people, don't you? You know, when you meet someone, you go, yeah, they're all right. I'd, it wasn't going to work. If I was to go out with a gay man, Graham wouldn't be the one. Who would be? Who would be? Just someone who wasn't as in your face as him. Well, which just someone- What do you mean in your face? What? Just sort of, you know, just the way he was straight away. I wouldn't go to a club to meet someone like that. I wouldn't. Cause I don't like doing that as a straight man. So just cause I'm gay, I don't suddenly get into house- Well, if you, if you were gonna be gay, who would you- what gay man would you want to marry? Probably someone who you don't know is gay. I don't know what that means. Someone who's just quiet about it, just get on with it. So if you were gay, you'd like a sort of straight man? No, because that's not going to work either, is it? That was my situation with Graham. But how do you how do you know if how, how would you if you were gay? Why would you approach someone who didn't know was gay? Well, so if you're gay, the only gay life you can do is by going to a club where it's a racket at four in the morning and meeting no, someone. No, right, then so that's what but I'm who, saying. I'm saying who would be your ideal partner if you were gay? Who would you like? 
there'll be someone who I don't know is gay, innit? I don't know what that means. What do you mean it was someone who don't know Because gay? I wouldn't go out with someone who's really like, oh, hello, and all that, with the shirt open, the Why towel. not? What's because, the... because that's the equivalent of going out with a woman who's got knickers up her ass, <laughs> and, you know, it's, it's, a, it's the equivalent. It's the in-your-face woman and the in-your-face man. I don't want any of you. <laughs> Well, who do you want? Well, who was your sort of guy? Not. Okay, well, just say what your sort of guy is then. Do you want him to be sort of like a man's man, sort of goes, you know, slap, he sort of, like, he, when you go, do something, you go, you, you dopey idiot, and he just sort of gives you... No, like, I don't want that. No, you want someone to go, oh, what's the matter with you? Do you no, want yourself better? Well, what do you want? What do you mean? I'm asking you what you want. Petal. I don't yeah, want what petal. Yeah, what do you want in a man? I'm asking you what the you want. The ones who are just normal, who just could talk, they'll go, all right, Carl, how's it going? Yeah, I'm all right, mate. Yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right. Well, okay. what are we doing tonight? Watching Die Hard, if you want. <laughs> go straight to bed after that? Yeah. <laughs> Oh, now he's straight in there! I love the fact he went from, like, not being sure to no. just, like, getting a, a man. But not great. It wouldn't be four in the morning. No. I'd be living my life as I am now. Right. But I'd, I'd be a gay man. Yeah, okay. So Because I'm, I'm me, aren't I? So yeah. that's not going to change. No. Why would it? No, you, so I'm just trying to... I'm, Carl, all we're trying to establish is what sort of guy you go for. Okay, we've settled that. If, um, sorry about that, um, if any, uh, people feel sorry for Graham, sorry about that, but, um, that's, that's settled. What I thought we could do, Carl, um, on this, the, uh, brand new fifth series of the Ricky Gervais show, we're talking about things that have happened since we met, looking back, what have you learned, where are we going forward from this, um, I thought we could play, uh, Room 101, um, the popular TV show where people cast the things they hate into Room 101 forever. Room 101, of course, is, uh, taken from, uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Remove all your fears and terrors and so, uh... Is there a copyright issue here? Can we uh, steal this idea? Well, yeah. Uh, well, let's play Room 102. Clever. This is the room next door to Room 101, which is worse, in my opinion. Is it? Oh, Winston Smith. He, he'd love to be in Room 101 if he went to Room 101. He'd go, oh, get me back to Room I didn't know... I didn't know where... Oh, I, I didn't know I was born. This is much worse. So, Carl, these are things that really annoy you. Don't put in things like you know, cancer and racism. I mean, that goes without They're saying. They're already in there. They're already in there. All the terrible things in in life here. This is just your little bugbears. The things that really annoy you that, you know. Well, I, I actually did the real show and I put in things like, um, lateness. That's my bugbear. I can't, I can't stand it. I think I put in, um, uh, oh, parents who let their kids run riot. Parents who think that everyone is interested in their kid as much as they are. Um, I remember I was talking about, um, this, this family, right? They were, they were passing the baby around in a restaurant and it was like being sick and they were all shouting about it. And I was like, oh. And, uh, um, and I, I got onto, oh yeah, they were breastfeeding it. And at one point I, I, I went on a, um, uh, this sort of like digression about a friend of mine who moved to the country. And, um, the woman next door, sort of this hippie woman next door, about 40, you know, the one those sort of like well, long grey hair, you know, you know what I mean? I Shave you your mean. legs and yeah. stop wearing flip flops. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they said, oh, we're just neighbours and we brought you around a rice pudding. And they gave my friend a rice pudding. And, uh, she went, oh, it's, um, it's made from breast milk because I'm, I'm still lactating. And I went, Thanks very much. And of course they, she went and they threw it away and washed the dish and gave it back to her. And it annoyed me. The arrogance of coming round and saying, uh, it's uh, rice pudding made my breast milk. The uh, uh, get out of here, yeah. you dirty hippie. <laughs> Is what? that what you'd have said though if she'd arrived at No, your I'd have said, oh, do you know what? I, um, I'm, I'm breast milk intolerant. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, well, I remember, um, the next day it went out on television. A journalist said, oh, Ricky Gervais, uh, showed, uh, is, uh, misogynist side. No, no, I stand by it. I stand by it. I don't eat strangers' breast milk. <laughs> I was saying about it, totally natural. Well, it's not, okay, uh, 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 yeah, eyes a cum sandwich. It doesn't matter if it's natural, it's fucking disgusting. Don't make me a rice pudding out of breast milk. You know, I'm, I'm not a fussy eater. Sure. Well, you are. Yeah. But no, I know what you mean. You, you, surely you draw the line there of a stranger's breast milk. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Any kind of jizz plan. Jizz plan, do you know what I mean? That's giving you an example of the sort of thing that one might put into room 102. 
Yeah. That, uh, people who try and make you eat their breast milk disguised as rice pudding. It's quite a specific fear. Yeah. That one. Uh. Graham. <laughs> oh, come on. He doesn't deserve that. Uh. Slugs. Was in there. Slugs. So, um. And then, then, then there's, uh, you have to put a case forward and me and Steve decide whether slugs go in or whether they, they stay out, whether they've got a purpose. Why? It's, it's just because I'm having a problem with slugs at the moment. There's a lot of slugs coming in the house. Why? Dunno. I just, they can get where, like, water can't, you know what I mean? Because they're, they're boneless, aren't they? So well, any little gap. So is water boneless? There's not many bones in water? No, no, that's what I said. Yeah, but you're saying they can get some where the water can't? Yeah, I know, they're even more likely to, because they sort of move about and that, and they're looking for light. Water's just happy where it is. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Why, why banish them all to room 102 slugs? Because they're harmless, aren't they? Yeah, but I also think, I mean, at the end of the day, they're happy wherever, so stick them in room 102, they're not bothering me, and they're happy. They're not bothering well, what no, the room no, is. no, 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 this is a metaphor. Room 102 means they disappear from existence. It's not really a room where you put in slugs with people making rice pudding out of their breast milk. It's not really, it, it, it no. It's not a, you can't rent that room. We are saying, would you take slugs out of existence? That's, that's quite a tough call, isn't it? Because everyone's going to have a go. But I don't know what they do. All I know is, they're clogging up my piping. <laughs> I had to go out and buy a plunger. I hadn't seen them since, like, comics when I was a kid. And I suddenly thought, I need one of them things that I always saw in comics. I, I never thought I'd need one of them in my life. It's 2008. I've got slugs in my pipes. <laughs> so, I went out, three quid it was, I had no idea what the going rate is for a plunger. Where did you go and get one? Where did you- It's a hardware shop around the corner. Uh, so I went round there, I said, you got a plunger? He said, what size do you want? I said, what size have you got? He said, oh, we've got three different sizes. I said, I'll have the middle one. So that was three quid. And, uh, took it back, gave it a bit of a plunge. Uh, and I think it was slugs, like, all, like, bits of black stuff came up. I think it was slugs in there, like, what, broken up what, slugs. Well, ha hang on, hang on, hang on, it could've just be black gunk, couldn't no, it? No, no, it looked very sluggish. <laughs> Cause remember, I've had a problem with them anyway, I'll go to the toilet or whatever, look round, there's a slug climbing up the wall out of the shower basin thing. Are you sure it's a slug? Yeah, definitely, definitely slugs, I have to keep chucking them out, cause I don't like killing anything. Right. I, I don't want to kill the slugs with slug pellets, I bought some copper ribbon. Right, they don't like going over that, they? don't do they? Like that. They, they get, get a little, little shock charge, yeah. But, now that should be a warning, but instead they're diverting. They've done a diversion, they've gone up the wall and they cross. <laughs> now it's like, that's a warning. That's like having a no trespassing sign. Yeah. And they're just going bollocks to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting in, and it's annoying me, and now you get to a point when you do say, well, if they carry on like this, I'll have to kill them because they're not, how, how much, how they're much- They're playing by the rules. I don't know what they're doing, I don't know what the purpose is. They just sit there still. I don't see them doing anything. I was lo looking at one close up. But well, what do you want to do? Be reading Russo. What do you want a slug to do? In the same way you see a bee collecting pollen, good, it's doing its little work. But they're, they're Ants carrying big leaves or whatever. But the slugs just sat in the They're all the doing kitchen. the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. That slug is out. It's eating. That it's is finding not, food. There's no food. There's no food. There's no food in our kitchen for a slug. Believe me. There's not enough there for me sometimes. <laughs> but never mind a slug. It's, there's nothing for it. Definitely not in the shower. What's he doing? <laughs> so, I told you ages ago about how the, they cause more problems than good. They eat, they eat cabbage. Right. Um, when they shouldn't be. Um, they get in letterboxes and nick stamps. They don't nick stamps. They eat the stamps. They like the glue on it. Right. Right. Is this a big problem though? <laughs> Is there an epidemic of slugs eating stamps? But I think it is, and that's why they're so slow. I think they're sweating glue. And right? it's slowing they're them. eating all them, and 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 that's <laughs> that's why they're sticking to stuff. Have you ever picked up a slug? Well sticky. They give off this glue. It's like the, all the glue they've eaten off stamps. They panic, and when they sweat, they sweat glue. Sweat? <laughs> Think of a drug, a slug. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean they sweat glue? If, you're if, making up nature. If you're, if this you, is like Attenborough, but like, made up. If you, when you see a slug, yeah, you prod it, it gets nervous, it wants to run off. But the problem is, because he's sweating glue. It's it, not sweating glue! It makes sense. <laughs> it's this is just a nonsense theory. It's just what I've noticed on him. Right, Rick, do you allow slugs in room 102? Well, I just want, I think we should, you know, you know, if, if they're gonna be gone forever, then we should, 
we should put a case forward. They're amazing creatures. If you haven't got them in your house, it'd be different. All you've got is people coming around saying you want some rice pudding. That isn't a world problem. That <laughs> wasn't me. Oh, right, right. Whatever it was. Um, no, but they're, they're amazing. They've got two sets of like antennae. The one at the top is for light, and the next one is that they can they can smell and get food in the air, just the slightest. What do they do for the world? Their food. If if only it's not good enough. That it's not good enough. What do you mean? But like that's well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Surely them being food for Who's eating them? Hedgehogs. Do they like them? Yeah, they love them. They're, yeah, they love slugs. Do they? Yeah. The thing is, though, if you're always going to upset someone, aren't you, with anything I put in room one? No, you just got to make a reasoned case, and I'm not sure that you've you've, you've argued well enough. I'm just slugs. having problems with them at the moment. I spent three quid on a plunger, and I don't like the idea that every time I get up in the night to go into the toilet, or whatever, I've got to put the light on because I might have a bit of sluggage between my toes. Sluggage, <laughs> a little bit of sluggage between my toes. But I mean, you, if you're going to put everything in in your house that causes problems, we're gonna, what else are we going to have here? Um, no, boilers. I'm, not, I'm not. It's just, I mean, at the end of the day, you only moan about what's fresh on your mind at the moment. And I haven't, you know, I've got to go to that house and I dread to think what's, how many slugs are going to be stuck to the ceiling and everything. Right. Okay. Well, so we need to move on. So you are not putting them in? I'm not putting slugs in. All right. Then. Slugs have not gone in, Carl, I'm afraid. What's your next one? Okay. Number two. Um, people who don't want to do what, what the brains would be better at doing. Right, okay, now I've got, I'll get around that sentence. Now, tell me again. Brains that don't want to do what their owners are good at. Ah, so now it's the brain's fault. Before you said you were going to put people in who don't do what their brain's good at, but now you've changed that. Now you're putting the, the blame on the brain. Now you want to put in brains who don't want to do what their owners are good at. I like the fact that you own a brain. Okay, no, no, no. I just need a bit more clarification, Rick. Before you ask questions, can you just expand on that point, please, KP? Do you know, like, pe people decide what they want to do, right. don't they, for a living? Mm -hmm. But sometimes they're not good enough. Right. You mean they have a dream and they can't fulfil it because they haven't got the, the, the skill or... Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. No. no. It's just that they haven't unlocked the thing that they're good at. Right. But, which is fair enough. You can't always find what's going on. There's a lot going on in the brain. Yeah. You know, there might be something up there that you, you just never find, which is sad. Right. Right. But you mean you may never discover your full potential because you may never st never stumble across it. You may never have the means. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. But that, that, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I only got into hospital radio because my dad was in hospital. So I found out about this thing and I thought, I didn't even know this existed. I want to go well, out Of course. It. So, but, I mean, so it's, that's a, there's much bigger issues there that, um, uh, the poor working class people don't get the same opportunities. Um, uh, people in the third world, where, when you're worrying about whether you're going to live through the next few days, you don't start thinking, I wonder if I can play the cello. Can I so, refer you back though, Rick? You made an interesting point there, but I fear that's not exactly what Carl was saying. I don't on. think that his point was quite uh, that profound. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I don't know. There was something to do with the brain not allowing its owner. Yeah, because that's the bit that annoys me. Fair enough if a brain hasn't decided what it wants to do, because you- What is this- Let it- let oh, it finish. God, this thing about finish. the brain- Shut up. Cause it hasn't- in charge like the numbskulls. Cause Shut it up. hasn't- it hasn't found- it's destiny type thing. A brain but is a brain is destiny. when someone is good at something and they know the brain is good at something, but then they don't want to do it and they want to go off and do something else. Sorry, who's to blame here? The person or the brain? I'm talking like him now. <laughs> I know what's Wh going who on. are you putting into room 102? What annoys you? A brain that doesn't let its owner know what it's good at or an owner that won't do what it, the I brain wants to do? I think it's the owner because say like a bloke who's good at plumbing. Yeah. His brain loves plum plumbing. <laughs> His brain loves plumbing. <laughs> he loves plumb. he's, he's sick of plumbing, um, so he goes off to try and uh, unplum. No, uh, he's he's going to do something else. He's going to do something else. He's carpentry. Now they say in this country the problem is we haven't got enough tradesmen. Right. We don't enough plumbers. Right. There's enough plumbers' brains. I don't know what the fuck that means. Shut up. Let what him are you talking Shut about? Up. Let him please finish. Because this brains, is like, this is like brains and pillows. Brains again. have not changed over the years. The brain is exactly the same. But it's the owner of the brain that's in charge. The brain could be going, I want to go for a walk, or I want to go and find something out. But if your body's too lazy to get up and go and see the stuff, 
the brain isn't going to get what it wants. It doesn't make Imagine, sense, Carl. Right, you are this. your brain. Let okay, me, you could have a good point if you said this. You could say that everyone's brain has the ability to become a plumber. Yeah. Uh, you know, your brain, you know, ah, yeah. but I don't know if it has, you see, because this is the thing. When I was younger, when I first left school, I had two jobs I wanted to do. I wanted to be a joiner, right, uh, or a car mechanic. I had to go out sort of joinery, uh, couldn't really get my head around it, right? Did work placement at a garage, messed it up, got kicked out. What did you now, do? Now the thing is- Why did you get kicked out? Just cause I messed the garage up. What, how did you mess it up? Uh, the fella was a, he's a bit moody, this fella, and he was, uh, he just decorated his garage. And you are like that. the slug in this scenario, aren't you? He just, do you know how like to paint the floor and everything? Mm. Make it with lines in it and everything like that. Right. What did you do? And it was, he painted it white. You shouldn't have white in a garage. Stupid with all the oil about and that. It's not the right colour, is it? It's like getting a white sofa, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. So he'd painted it all, and then, uh, he sort of said, do you want to, uh, change the oil on the car? So yeah, go on then. Uh, so what do I do? He said, you pull a sump out, stick a bucket underneath, catch the oil. Alright then. Go down there, pull a the sump out, hold the bucket, but because of the pressure, the oil doesn't come straight out, it floats out sideways. Went all over his white floor, he went mental, kicked me out. Now the thing is, that wasn't really my fault, my brain didn't know. It was showing an interest. No, what? Right, let okay. him finish! Oh God, what does he mean? Shut up, the let brain, my and my please, brain. The please brain was showing up. an interest, but at the end of the day, if it hasn't got the knowledge, what can it do? Now, you could say, was that my fault or my brain's fault? No, I'd never say that. People may be in the wrong job. They, we, you might not discover what you're really Yeah, but I'm talking at. about, you get people, all right, let's go to the extreme. People with no legs who want to be swimmers. Don't be stupid. <laughs> oh, God! Oh, God! I'm so annoyed! Oh. Is this a big problem? It's, it's madness, isn't it? It's mad that the brain wants to do that so much. The brain's in the wrong, in the wrong body almost. Yet, yeah. are you in me? No. A plumber, a plumber, a plumber who can plumb is annoying when he jacks it in as a living because there's other brains who can't do plumbing. <laughs> they don't get their head round it. Means. Look, you you must have learned the same stuff at school as me, but a lot yeah. of it wasn't interesting to my brain. I wasn't bothered. It wasn't into taking it in. Yet look at me in like editing and all that. I can use all that equipment because my brain's my brain's happy with it. Yeah, you found something you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. But why aren't I good at plumbing or joinery or being a mechanic? Because you're probably not interested in it. I was. I loved it as but a people kid. People don't do have different brains. People are different. Some right. people are more higher logic, low yeah, emotion. That's, that's you what know? I'm saying. Yeah, but you, I don't know what you're putting in room 102 because you're saying these. It's like this brain's wandering around Who's looking for blame? a body, and it goes, "Oh, I'll choose that body. Hang on, this body doesn't even want to do some plumbing." It's, it's a matter of taste. Sometimes it's just a matter of taste. It's good to do what you're good at and stop chasing a dream. <laughs> this is the most complicated thing. You it could is. just put in noisy kids, like Ricky. Why is this? This, this is a brain that because someone work. else would have done noisy kids. There's no point everyone putting in the same thing. But I brain. don't even know what your point is here. What, I, what, for example, what I put in were parents who ignore their ignore their kids running riot in a restaurant or on a train. Mm. The arrogance of them thinking that oh, aren't, isn't it fun? That there was someone to blame. I was basically putting in bad parenting, or you know, there was someone I wasn't going. A brain who wanted to be a plumber, but the not, plumber didn't. I'm not putting the brain in, it's just people, um, if I had a really good skill, I'd hope that, that I'd use it. But if I, it's you, like- You don't know what you're good at until you, till you try it. Uh You might be the best drummer in the world. I know, but they're the people I'm having a go at. They're the people who I'm having a go at. The people who know they can do something, but they don't do so it. So people who don't fulfil their own potential. That's a, that's a good one. Is that a better point? Yeah, that's what I meant. But there's nothing to do with this duality, this brain, brain versus person. I don't know what that is. It's a weird thing you've got, a really weird little kink you've got, that you think this brain is another entity that lives in your head, that you own it, and you've got to become the master of it. <laughs> like some sort of weird dog. Uh, Who am I talking to now, Carl or his brain? We're both listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put in, uh, people who don't fulfill their full potential. Slugs are safe, but people who don't fulfill their full potential, you have got into room 102. Got a couple more things for room 102, Carl? My, you know my problem? 
with me restless leg syndrome. Oh, yeah. If I could put that in. Right, okay. What is this problem? The problem I've got with my legs, how they sort of come alive at night. <laughs> <laughs> and what Tap are they dancing. doing? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah. I sort of go to bed, I'm tired, and then uh, I sort of nod off for about 40-odd 40, 40 minutes. Yeah. And then my legs go. Right. And they just, I can't sleep. It's really depressing. I think it's actually affecting me, sort of, health-wise, because I'm not sleeping right through the night. So like, I want to sleep. And what does Graham me. say? What does, um, Suzanne say? Uh, well, she's annoyed with it, because she's getting loads of bruises. Mm. Kicking her. I did a little bit of research on restless leg syndrome when he, um, mentioned it to me. Uh, and, uh, two little bits of information you'd be interested in, Steve. Uh, it is exacerbated and made worse by a sedentary lifestyle. Right. Lack of activity, lack of exercise, and it can be alleviated with um, the opposite of that. Exercise, um, leading a, um, a more active lifestyle, which I, I proves walk. my point. No, You're no. like a slug. I do loads of walk, and I make sure I do a good walk. If anything, it's because I walk too fast, because I tense my legs up when I walk. Uh, the doctor didn't say anything to do with that when I told him about ages ago. He said it was because I was eating ice cream. I don't, well, I don't know what that means. Well, I don't know something that's is. in ice cream. He just is this the same doctor that said your nerves are too long? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a different fella. This right. is the proper doctor. But, right. um, but yes, yeah, so I've cut that out and it works for a bit, but now it's got to a point where I have to go to bed and I have my legs outside of the bed. I have to put my feet on the floor. What, what? do you mean? What? I have to lie in the bed. Like With your feet position, on the floor? I have to stick my legs out and feet on the floor. That's insane. You can't <laughs> sleep like that. Well, I do. I nod off, and then maybe in the night, when I wake up, my legs are back in the bed. So either they get bored, or they, or they, <laughs> uncomfy, or whatever. Yeah. Or they eventually get tired. But it's kind of like if I have them there, it's like they think they're awake and they're being used. The only other thing I can do is if I lie on my front, and then have my legs in the air. Well, hold on. Whoa! You lie in the front and have your legs in the air. Like that. Say if that's my head. Oh, like um. Like that. Like a scorpion. Like the front cover of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Yeah, like that. If I do that, I think if I can get the blood out of my legs, they, they, they don't work the same. Mm. Is this advice from the doctor or? No, it, is it this myself. doctor? Is it, was he from the 12th century? No, that doctor didn't tell me to do that. I sort of did it. You and just I thought that, that works. That off. Piece of well, have you, have you, have you, uh, you know, put this into the, the Royal Society of Surgeons? What? Well, this discovery that if you lay... No, it's my cure. I'll, I'll use it. It might not work for everyone. And so, crazy leg syndrome is destroying your... Sleep. Right. And it's important to get sleep, isn't it? If you can't sleep, it drags you down. And my legs... It's, it's, they just come alive at night. It's like they, they belong to a runner or something. Mm. And they want to run. And I'm going, oh, I just want to sleep. But why don't you run? Why don't you go for a run? Because it's late at night. Yeah, but go for a run in the day. Tire them out. It's fine in the day. Tire them out in the I day. Tire them out in the day. No, you don't. Go for loads of walks in the day. Loads of so walks. So if you were, if you were to go, you go to bed. You got restless leg syndrome. If you were to go to a run for a run, that would cure it. I've looked it up. No, it does. I do have long, proper walks. It no, no, but if you know, it, immediately. If anything, it's like the legs like it, and they want more of it. It's like a puppy. You take it for a walk and it's jumping up and down, I want more walks. Well, you can't have a walk, we had a walk earlier. Go to sleep. They're fine in the day. Whilst I'm sat here, they're not probably me. They're, they're, they're not what? They're not probably me. <laughs> okay. They're not probably me! They're, it they're makes not, up words! They're not giving me any grief whilst they're I'm sat here. They're not probably me. But when night falls, it's all gonna be different. It's like they go, I don't want to go to sleep yet. Like it's like a little legs. kid. It's a kid who wants to stay up in case it misses something. Yeah. And that's why I just have to let them stay up. Stick them out the bed. <laughs> I love the fact that you go to bed before your legs. Yeah. Oh, God. It's annoying. I mean, it's really... Uh, well, I don't know if I can put in your legs. This leg syndrome, because, as I say, it can be easily cured. You could get up, you could do a bit of exercise, you could walk around. Um, yeah, but I've tried all that, Doctor, and it doesn't work. You suggest anything else. Right, uh, there's your problem. He's not a doctor. No, exactly. That's what I mean. Um... No, well, I, I'll put it in. I will put it in if you try that. Next time your legs are outside the bed, gay, say, okay, listen, I'm going to go for a run. Put on a sweatshirt. No, because he's Put always, on some shorts. It's always late at night. I'm not yeah. going out. It's dangerous. Well, you go to bed at half eleven. Yeah. 
Go for one half eleven. Half eleven. Fifteen minutes. Mm. So, are they going in or not? No, no, because you, you're not. I, 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 I'm not sure that you're doing everything for it. What's your next thing to try and get in room 102? It's a tricky one, this. Go on. It's, it's people who, um, who think that humans are special. Do you know what I mean? But you think that. No, I don't. I don't think humans are special. I but think what, some of us are. I think you get the odd one who, who creates something and, uh, you know, you go, that's amazing. But the way we say the human race is amazing, no it isn't. A small percentage of it is. There's a load of numbnuts. <laughs> and it annoys me how people say the human race did this human race. No, it didn't. Let's name them. Because there's only a few people who have done stuff that matters. Is that what you think? Yeah, definitely. We just start, we think we're good and we're not. We're but, just... uh, well, who matters? Uh, just before we get on to your point. So you're putting in the rest of the human race? No, just people who say that, that they're good. People who have said that statement that isn't the human race an amazing thing? So okay, anyone well, who's ever said isn't the human race amazing yeah, yeah, goes I'd, in room 102? Yeah, I'd say don't be stupid. So most of the human race is going in? Uh, well have you ever said it? Well I think, the, I think all, I think all species are amazing. But when people say the human race they sort of mean... They think, what well, you mean, that, that, that you can go... The great people. The, the great art. Ones you know, inventors, to things that were, you know, that we've, we've... And how is the human race not amazing? Because we don't, we're not needed to keep this, this planet going. We're an added thing that we're was added on later. the food later. chain, yeah, that's right, yeah. We were added last. Yeah. It's like, there's some room left, what we do? Stick some humans on. But don't forget, we, we, this thing of we being added doesn't make sense, because it was a process. There was no yeah. point when someone said, we don't need this, let's stop now. We kept, we kept mutating and being selected. Yeah, I know, but sometimes you can keep, it's, it's going back to what we were talking about last time about, uh, you've got a house, you fill it with stuff. At some point, yeah. you've got everything you need. You've right. got your kettle, you've got your fridge, you've yeah, got your telly. Yeah, but they're gonna stop to slugs, then it'll you've be fine. Gone, I'm buying this But no, no, ornament. nothing, but nothing needed anything. Yeah, it did. It, the world needed, I mean, okay, I tried to put slugs in, you didn't allow them in. Yeah. Fair play to the slugs. They must do something somewhere. Yeah. Just not in my house. But, but it could have stopped at slugs. They got it right. What, 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 what's this thing that you need anything else? The slug evolved, it, you know, it, it... No, but we don't add anything, do we? All we've done since we've been around is mess up the world. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. I'm saying we're not needed. I don't know what the last thing was that was needed. No, we're not needed. We're not needed. Yeah. So what was the last thing? Before. Doesn't make any sense. What was the last thing that was invented by nature? It's Carl, arbitrary, it's a stupid what question. What do you mean? It's not a stupid question. Everything is just happening, it's evolving now. The right, look at it like this, you see, I think, we think we're important because yeah. we just do. Well, I don't, but some do. And they're the ones I want to get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Another argument with himself. Now, we think we're special, there might be something else going on that's more important. We're in this universe, aren't we? Yeah. They try to make a new universe. What do you mean? There's a machine somewhere. What? A big bang. They're making a big bang again. Right. Well, that you've got that completely wrong, but sure. They're not trying to create a new world. They're trying to recreate the conditions that happened at the beginning of the big bang. They're not trying to recreate a new world. All right. So they, but the it's world completely came. Completely different. But the world came from the big bang. Yeah, they're trying to recreate the conditions so they can test and they can experiment to see dangerous. the conditions before. Yes, it is dangerous. Apparently, there is a threat. There, admittedly, there is a danger. Yeah. Very small danger that they could create a black hole that would destroy the world. That so why are they true. doing that? Who's allowed that? <laughs> This is what annoys me, it's because humans think they're special. Oh, who made the Big Bang? Oh, I'd like my name on that. I want to <laughs> claim it. Why do people always want to better someone else? It's happened, let them have it. Well, don't you, th what you said about progress, you're trying to change time. Yeah, but that's not going to harm anyone, a Big Bang. I just don't, I, I don't think we need, I mean, we haven't filled this universe yet. Have we? Talk, but they, what are they talking about? I don't know what you're saying, you're contradicting yourself. Every other sentence contradicts what you said last time. You do want to fill it, you don't want to fill it. We haven't filled this universe, we don't need another one. We do want progress, we don't want progress. I'm Carl, saying, what do you want? I'm saying we don't want another universe. We, no, no. we haven't got our head around this one yet. We're we don't not know trying where to create a new is. one, but go on. Don't create a new one. We're not trying to, no one's trying is, to. Is that your philosophy? Don't create a new universe. <laughs> But why are it's we looking at that? It's a giant research experiment. Why it's, they're not trying to that? create a new universe. Why are we looking at that then? Why do we want to go back today, Dot? So that we can better understand the world that we live in, how we, the world d d evolved into the position we're in now. If it did indeed start with the Big Bang, what were the conditions? How did it come from nothing into something? That's what we do. 
Do we say why and how? I know, and but when, sometimes... It, and what next? And I, is it good? You know, I don't mind asking questions. I like asking questions. Is Ask yours question. are where are slugs going? It, it's just this thing of faffing about with things that are, they don't know what they're doing. Okay, right, okay, Carl, you're in charge of the world now. You are this... You, you're all-powerful. You're like a god, okay? You can do anything. You go, you call all the scientists, and they go, what do you want of us? Oh, oh, orange-headed one. What the fuck do you want of us? Right? Right. Stop the Big Bang research. Stop it now. Mm. Okay? Okay, drop your talk. Okay, good. Throw that away. What do you want them to do? The might, the might of every intellect in the world standing before you, as far as you can see. Hello? Listen, everybody. This is what I want you to work on. Go. What do you say? Uh, well, I want, I want to come in and... How long have they been working on the Big Bang idea? I forget it. it just, you've got every science... No, but I don't work. just want to come in and, and poo-poo that, because they're going to... They're, poo-poo. They've, they've done a lot of research well, on Hold it. on. You, you wanted to stop a minute ago. Yeah, I know, but you don't just come in... Guns are blazing. I'd say, I'd say, hello everyone. You can everyone. do anything you want. Oh, go on, go on yeah, Hello everyone. Hello Carl, leader. Right, uh, listen, um, this Big Bang thing you've been doing. Yeah, well uh, that's just only a few of us, that's like less than a millionth of a percent of us, we're all here. Yeah. I've dropped AIDS research, I've dropped cancer research. Right, well why have you dropped that? I'm working Who's told you to do that? Well no, we just, well we knocked off, they said you wanted to tell us something. We're all here, every scientist in the world well, is listen, here. listen, well, where are you from again? Well, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter, I'm from Cornwall, I'm, I'm looking at... No, what, at, what research are you doing? Oh, well, uh, I'm looking at, um, uh, ha what happens if you give Feminax to an owl. What happens? Well, I'm halfway through it, you, I got called away. Look, I'm really busy, what do you want me to work on? Who said they're doing cancer? Hey. Go back. Go back to work. Cheers. Right. Okay, the rest of us I've doing got... stuff that you think we're fanning around with, what would you want us Listen, to do? well, I can't do it all today. What about me? I was doing AIDS. Hang on a minute. I was doing AIDS. You just wait a minute. Right, okay, why does cancer get to go back? Are you saying that cancer's a bigger problem than AIDS? You got back to, to work. So I'm AIDS to... go back. I'm doing, oh, I'm doing restless legs. Right, syndrome. can everybody but the Big Bang people leave? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we've come to an end of, um, episode two of series five of the Ricky Gervais Show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Thank you. And Carl Pilkington. All right. I was working on cold sores. Fuck off. So, welcome to episode three of this final Ricky Gervais Show series. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Have you heard this, uh, thing they're doing? The, uh, schools have got together. They're, um, they're tired of obesity being a problem in England. It's a big problem in England. Um, basically everyone's overweight, particularly kids. There's kids that are like, you know, ten stone going to infant school and stuff and junior school. It's getting ridiculous. And so now, the teachers are allowed to weigh the kids. They're gonna weigh the kids, okay? <laughs> Yeah, get them in there and go, right, you, right, get on the scale. And then they're going to send a letter to the parents saying, um, please be aware, um, your child is obese. Now, I don't know what good that's going to do because a teacher will send a letter to a parent, go, uh, dear Mr and Mrs Barnes, um, we weighed little Johnny today at school and he's overweight, he's a big fat pig. And they're going to go, yeah, we know. We have to push him out the door to get him to school. He makes a popping sound. <laughs> we know he's fat. He eats too much. We know he's fat because we have to buy him pairs of trousers every two weeks. Yeah. Well, we know he's fat because we're a couple of fat bastards Always. ourselves. I love that when they say about a child obese, they show you a picture of a kid and his face is nearly closed up. Yeah. It, it's just closed, right? There's no eyes anymore. He's just got little slits for eyes where his cheeks and his forehead are meeting. Yeah. Right? And you just, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then you see the parents, they go, well, yeah, we can't do anything. And you go, no, look at you. Yeah. No, I saw a couple the other day. I saw a dad, giant arse. Yeah. And then I was walking behind them and two kids, exactly the same giant arses. Yeah. Uh, now that, I don't, I can't believe, believe that that's Well, they eat the same things. You can't... Yeah. Like a couple of bison it was. Yeah, if they're, if they're, yeah, if the parents are just eating, 
They can't say to the kids, you've had enough. They go, right. what the fuck? Look at you! I saw them in the, in Tesco supermarket. You know, they've got like cafes in there now. Have they? Big fat family in there. The fact that they're buying food and they're having a break from buying food to eat food. <laughs> to eat food, <laughs> yeah. Just well, sums it up. It made them a bit peckish, didn't it? I mean, that, don't forget, that is the only exercise they get, pushing a trolley round. They get home and then they wedge themselves in that three-piece suite and they're watching ITV1 for the rest of the night. Yeah. And, and eating cakes and things, microwavable stuff. Well, they're actually, they're watching, uh, X Factor, but they're not, they're only watching X Factor waiting for the adverts for Pringles. Exactly, Domino's yeah. pizza. <laughs> exactly. That's what they're looking forward but to. They, they could do that. They could make it a bit harder to shop, couldn't they? If you walk through a door, it goes ding, 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 and, and you go, go. And for fat people, the, sh the shopping moves around a bit. <laughs> yeah, you know it's what I mean? constantly it's, out, moving away. It's, yeah, exactly. You're putting it on a string. Yeah. Or something. You want the pie, and you, you have to at least get up a bit of a sweat. Well, they're on the conveyor pie. belts, like in a sushi restaurant. Exactly. <laughs> and they've just exactly, got to chase yeah. after the oven fried chips. Unbelievable. Or so, is there some kind of cattle grid device that only fat, is there anything that we could put? Oh, you can only get to you this. You can only get to the food. If you if can you... get through this. Right, yeah. That's a good point, yeah. So the really fattening stuff is through a thin door. Or just, yeah, or one of those kind of, um, those sort of, uh, tubes that soldiers you see have to crawl through when they're yeah, doing their training. and that's to, to, to pies, to right. calorific, <laughs> exactly. to the calorific, calorific stuff. section. Yeah. And the, the, the shop is full of salads. Yeah. You can go around, you can even eat as you go around yeah, the salads. Yeah, it's like a you forest of salads, Exactly, yeah. you can graze and you can buy. But if you want to get to the pies and cakes and all that, yeah. you've got to get through a little you've tube. You've got to crawl through a little tube. Yeah, yeah. it would just be forever going, dude! Fat bloke stuck in aisle three, they'd have to keep <laughs> yeah. getting them out. Well, I, I was stuck behind one on the tube. It, it got out of the tube, uh, on the escalators. And you know, like on escalators, you're meant to stand to the right so people can get past. Yeah. Well, waste of time him standing on the right. Yeah, yeah. Taking up the full thing. <laughs> uh, he had a tracksuit on, like they always do. <laughs> you know. Uh -uh. Never seen a track in his life, that, <laughs> no. that tracksuit. And, uh, so I stayed behind him because he had no option. You saw everyone behind me sort of going, what's the old up here? Like a convoy of people going, what's up the front? What's happening here? What's up? And it's him sort of blocking it. He gets to the bit, you know, where you have to put your ticket in or your oyster card and yeah. swipe it. He had to go through the bit for trolleys. Oh, oh trolleys and luggage. Yeah. How embarrassing is Unbelievable. that? Unbelievable. But that's but you when you know, isn't it? That's when you go, you know what? Exactly. But I don't think there's enough stigma. I think, because, uh, you know, political correctness now and, uh, and, you know, and, and, the fact that food is so refined, there's no stigma anymore. I laugh about being fat. I should be ashamed. I should walk down the street and go, fatty! That's, that's what I want to get me out of there. I, I, I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, I go, oh, you fucking fat bastard. Yeah. But no, I think, know, I think the same every time I see you. I know, but yeah. look how successful I am. But you're right. It's, you know, it's... I should be, you know. People look up to you, Rick. That's I the know. problem. You're a role model. They've got pictures of you on their wall. I often get a role model for what people want to be. Do they, yeah. Now, maybe they don't mean they want to make a successful sitcom and uh, no. be rich and famous. Maybe they mean I want to eat as much as I want and no one say anything about the it. The number of times I've seen you on one of those, the ideal dinner guest. I know. You're not the ideal dinner guest. Well, you, I'm, Firstly, I'm, there'd be nothing else to go round for that, anyone else. And I'm always early. Right. So by the time anyone, that, that'd be yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. The, the ideal dinner guest, as long as he comes halfway through the meal. Yeah. So and we, I think they mean, oh, it'd be funny because he'd be very witty and charming. No, he'd just be stuffing his face for two hours. Wouldn't be talking. I wouldn't be talking. <laughs> if there's food there, I, I, I'll just listen. I can listen. I mean, I can't really hear because when I chow down, some of it gets in my ears. Sure, yeah. I will go deep into a pasta. Yeah, the face is in the bowl. I'm I'm actually deaf and blind for four minutes that I'm eating. <laughs> yeah. It's like when a horse bolts. Yeah. They yeah, can't yeah. see or hear anything. Yeah. They just yeah. bolt. Um, but, you know, th I don't know what we could do, really. I mean, I... I, I mean, I think we should be clear here. We're not... Uh, we're not saying, you know, we don't want to encourage We're people. not saying, um, fat people are alright, we're saying they're wrong. Well, yeah, but I, I want to make oh, an no. no, I want to make an important point here, okay. which is that we're not talking, well, we're not talking the about pigs. how, listen, what, fat, this they're... is important, this is an important point. Okay. There's a lot of young people, you know, and they, they don't eat and stuff because they want to try and look like Victoria Beckham and all that stuff. Oh, yeah. We're not talking about that, we're not talking about just being, you know, respectable size, no. you know, a little bit curvy or whatever. You don't got to be like a size zero. We're not talking about that debate. Definitely not. We're talking about the crazy obesity that's going mm. on. Five foot two, you're weighing 14 stone. You, Absolutely. That's, it's a time to probably stop mm. going to the all-you-can-eat buffet. Yeah. Which is not a competition, <laughs> incidentally. But, you know... It's because, yeah. like you said, though, you're not allowed to There's call no them fatty anymore. Yeah. Like, yeah. When, I, I when I was at school, if there was a fat kid, 
Yeah. He did get, you know, b sort of being picked on on that isn't good. His nickname but the fact was is, Paul Pie or Fatty but, or But he'd, be, or... he'd sort of be chased to be beaten up, so at least he got a run. <laughs> <laughs> Whereas now, kids aren't allowed to pick on little fat kids. No, I know, I know. So he's not <laughs> running anywhere, and it gets worse. See that, maybe that's, it's, it's, is that, is that a good thing? If you pick on a fat kid and steal his lunch money, is that being, is that cruel to be kind? Mm. Do you know well, what I mean? Survival of the fittest again, isn't it? But I mean, you know, they go, uh, they go, they go, okay, Jobson, you picked on a little fatty again and nicked his lunch money. You go, yeah, I thought he was eating too much and I'm worried about his heart. They go, oh, well done, Jobson. Yeah. Go and pick on some more fat people, nick all their lunch money. I don't know what the rules are. I mean, I, I don't know. It's all gone crazy. I mean, I think I'm allowed to call people fat because I'm a bit fat. You're reclaiming the word. It's like our black people can say the N word. I can say the F word. I can say yeah. I can say fatty because I am fat. You know. It is remarkable. I mean, you've seen pictures of Ricky Shirley Carl in his youth. I mean, you know, a kind of David Bowie like uh, face. You know, yeah, very it's a sort different of person. strong. Well, anyone who I, who's ever seen that to me has said I, I don't understand. They're just genuinely baffled. I mean, it is weird. It's re. I don't understand, Rick, how you've gone from that. People should look you up on the web, and it doesn't make any sense. Doesn't Jane get annoyed? Don't you feel like she's been ripped off? <laughs> <laughs> no, no. When I was twenty, I not notice. I was twenty, yeah. and then and I stayed like that till I was about twenty nine, and then then I thought, oh, well, then I started filling out. Then I was sort of like yeah, becoming but I a normal. Knew you by when you were about thirty six, and you were yeah. Oh, I was already there. No, I'd done the eating years then, boy. No, I'd, I I went from about. I mean, in those pictures, I was probably like eight and a half stone, too thin. Yeah, and then I was like nine. And then 30, 31, went to 10 stone, and then about a stone a year. I think I was my fattest when, uh, just after. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, I'm, uh, I'm like 14 stone now. But it's like, it's like, if you look at it on the web or something, compare the two, it's like one of those Weight Watchers before and after, but the wrong way around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really <laughs> strange. Yeah, so, so I feel that I can have a go at, at fat people. I think I can claim the word I can call fatty. Like, look, Steve can have a go at, like, you can have a go at bald people, Carl. You can go, oh, look at that round-headed, bald twat. You will never see someone as round-headed and bald as you, but, and Steve can go, oh, look, Rick, look at that fucking twattish, goggle-eyed freak over there. No, 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 no. How often well, would that happen? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on. Let's slag Ricky off a bit more, can we, and fattos? <laughs> <laughs> also, I've got. A, this is how much I've let myself go, Steve. It's finally happened. I want you to test my trousers. There, feel them. Oh, the, what is that? That is some pajamas. Kind of, are you actually wearing pajamas? You, I'm actually wearing. It happened come out today. Of the house. That's the first time. Now, was it because of speed? You had to get out of the house because you. No, were late? I'll tell you why. Right? Okay, the last couple of years. Um, uh, I mean, for the last, I'd say, ten years, I've been wearing comfortable clothes. I never wear a pair of jeans that are too tight. I don't wear shoes that are It's just comfort for me. Yeah. I mean, you, you see me fidget when I put a suit on for an award ceremony. Yeah. I don't like it, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, I never look good in stuff. You see it on the model in the, in the shop window. Yeah. Puts it on you. Oh, well, okay. So, that's great. They look like David Beckham. I put it on, I look like a wallet or something. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> just, yeah. it, it doesn't look good. Um, I've been wearing, um, as you know, sweatpants. Right, yeah, uh, you know, yeah. a, a drawstring. Yeah. Okay. I got a pair of um, sweatpants recently that are nearly pajamas. They're so. That, that, I mean, what is the distinction at this point? I don't. I don't know. I don't know. It's quite a thin line. The, 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 so today they're nearly pajamas. Today um, they're in the wash. So I thought, hold on, though, I might as well just wear my pajamas. I should point out that it's not a 1950s pair of pajamas that looks a bit like a suit with a little breast pocket. No. And it's, you, you wouldn't necessarily notice. No, you wouldn't. Until you touch they're, them, you realise there's a kind of lycra. Yeah, they're very sort of nice and thin. They look like a tracksuit bottom, but here's the difference. I've even done away with a drawstring. Look, these are just mm -hmm. elasticated. elasticated. This is the day I really gave up. I used to worry about what I looked like, obviously, when there was, uh, you know, when there was a nice sort of clothes horse to hang nice clothes on, mm. i.e. my body, you know, I I did squeeze into jeans. I did, you know, wear, um, I was, I was, um, I was fashionable, but, um. Did you, I can't imagine you going in shops though and looking through racks of clothes and, did you do all that stuff? Steve, I look good in anything, mate. That's the, that's the difference. Right. Now, doesn't matter. Armani could dress me. Doesn't matter. Yeah. He's not, I mean, not that he'd want to. I can't believe I, I keep getting offered from people like him and designers um, that call my agent saying, um, does he want us to dress him for the um, 
the Emmys. Do they the do? Globes. Do they do pajamas? Well, exactly. <laughs> One, I think. Why do they wonder? Uh, 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 what is that going to put sales up? Is someone going to be watching that and go, hey, "Yeah, that that bloke looks short and fat and sweaty." Um, get me Armani on the phone. But you know, maybe there's someone from the Emmy committee going, can you phone up Ricky Gervais and just yeah. check that when they say, can we dress him from the Emmys, we mean, can we make sure he's dressed yeah. from the Emmys? Can we tuck him in <laughs> yeah. and leave his slippers at the hotel? Exactly. Um, but yeah, so uh, I don't do it anyway because I'm mildly embarrassed. I, we went around those sort of luxury lounges where they give you things, they yeah. give you these, like, suits, like you know, Armani, Hugo Boss, they're just giving you Hang suits. I'm well, worried about this. Oh, yeah. When's this going on? Yeah, when before, like, the Emmys, every, every... Well, what Fuck, I was out there, <laughs> no one notified me. <laughs> Maybe you didn't get an invite. What do you um, mean I didn't get an invite? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, the first one I went to, I was mildly embarrassed right around. Then I saw, like, Helen Mirren, The Sopranos. Bloody Helen with... Mirren's going round there and I'm not... Yeah. Yeah. But she has, she has, she's got more money than me, she don't need to go and get free stuff. She's the queen, she's the richest woman in the world. Fucking hell. Yeah, you've been, you've missed out, Steve. And they, they, they measure you and everything. I've, ta I've oh, taken... Oh, piss off, this I've, is insane. I've taken one suit. I've taken one suit and, um, uh, I think a jacket. But I usually what I do is I say I have a pair of sunglasses. I'm like Alton John at home. I've got a drawer full of the best sunglasses in the world. One-off editions of these beautiful sunglasses where I'm embarrassed not to take something. They're incredible. They just, they just give you all these things, you know. I it, feel like, um, the kid <laughs> in, uh, the Pied Piper... Remember when the Pied Piper, as revenge, he takes all the kids to a sort of yeah. magical land inside a rock where there's just sweets and fun, but the little lame, little lame kid, boy, he, couldn't he can't get in there. He's left behind in the rat, formerly rat-infested town. But, but he had the last laugh, didn't he? Because he couldn't go and get locked in the cave. Yeah, but he didn't... They weren't locked. It was a magical land inside the cave. He wanted to be in there. Was it? Yes, or famously. Was it, or was he a paedophile? Yeah, but that's got to be, uh... It's got to be better than being stuck in a town with rats <laughs> and old people. <laughs> At least you get sweets. <laughs> and a puppy. I worried then for a minute. I thought, oh, that's libelous. What, the, the, the uh, Pied Piper, Piper was a pedophile? Like, so, uh, excuse me, it's the Pied Piper here. Um, we are, yeah. uh... We represent the Pied Piper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We represent the Pied Fiddler. The Pied Piper. The, the, <laughs> yeah. the Pied Piper. Pied Piper. Um, yeah, well, I mean, I, um, you know, I used to, uh, I used to care about fashion. Mm. Um, but, uh, I also had little mistakes. If you're right. being creative with clothing, you get, not everything's a winner. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? You can't always look good. Even even when I thought I looked good in everything. So what was, just be quickly, what sort of era are we talking? Well, um, uh, obviously student, that's when I sort of did the... And what was your default look? Um, new romantic. Right. I mean, you know, the first thing I did when I got to college, dyed my hair. Blousy shirts. Uh, blousy shirts, but I dyed it black, sometimes military. The military was very big then, so, right. you know, you'd have dyed black hair and a bit of eyeliner, but... You know, maybe look a bit, a bit, um, sort of, um, you know, gorilla. Then, um, um, I got signed, uh, when I was in a, a, a pop band, a failed pop band, very quickly. But, you know, I bought designer clothes. But then it all went, okay? So, the poor years, um, from when I was about, I don't know, 22 to 29 Look before I got a job. Four years, starting in 22, you had the high life. You yeah. out by then. Yeah, and, uh, so, uh, we lived in that awful little place where I, I, I talk about it live, where, you know, there was no toilet so often I'd, I'd wee in the sink. Sure. Um, and so, Great uh, days. so I thought, well, I didn't have any money at all. And I used to wear a tracksuit all the time then, because I used to be, I used to run round London. I was on the dole. Um, we had 16 quid between us a week to spend, right? So there was a lot of chili con carne being eaten yes. and rice, just filling up on rice and, and, uh, and I'd run everywhere. And I was like, You'd I, run everywhere. Yeah, I'd just run. I'd get up and I'd run places. I'd run around the park. I'd run to visit friends who had jobs. I'd run to art galleries. And I'd run London. That was, that was like my job. But why were you running it? It sounds like it's the life of a smackhead. Why I was were you <laughs> running everywhere. <laughs> I was super fit. In my twenties, I'm not only sort of like thin, but fit as well. I'd run at least five to ten miles a day and work out i'd do i did karate twice a week i'd so i just i mean honestly Every, anything but a job anything but a job yeah because i was trying to be a pop star and right. i told myself no i'm an artist yeah, i can't yeah. go, possibly get a job it's bohemian i just eat rice yeah. well and i was fine it was absolutely fine never but i never thought oh this is really annoying i've got to get a job i thought you know, I haven't got a job. I'm doing this. I'm doing a banner. You were and signing it, on, were you? Getting yeah. Gold uh, well, I, I couldn't. I couldn't because um, uh, I hadn't had a job before that. So I think we got our rent paid, and then we'd split Jane's money that she earned. We got our rent paid, and you know, we were left with. Uh, as, as I say, I remember it being it was sixteen quid a week, and it was it was the early eighties, mid eighties. So um, I didn't get new clothes. 
So I had some, you know, old, old ones and, you know, to go to Jumble Sales, it's fine. Yeah. Okay. Um, but I remember once we, uh, were getting new curtains and, uh, the old ones that were in this flat were like sort of a chintzy, sort of goldish sort of lie with a thread in them with sort of leafy pattern, uh, very sort of thick. What kind of late 70s style? Yeah, exactly. And Jane was gonna t- took the old ones down. I went, don't throw them away. I'll make a suit out of those. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, sort of, Jane just sort of nodded and went, okay. And she went to work. Yeah. So I thought, wow, okay. Let's have a go. I'll I've show never, her. I've never made a suit before, <laughs> but how hard can it be? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I used to, you know. That would be my first thought. Um, I used to make everything. I used to make, uh, I remember, uh, <laughs> I made shelves once. I found three bits of wood in a skip, okay, and I sort of put two, um, vertically and put one across the top, right, so it was like, you know, a goal post, right, I thought it was right. Um, I didn't put a nail in each side, it sort of wobbled, I put it against the wall and it wouldn't stand up, it sort of like, <clears throat> leaned like I made a parallelogram, so what I did, I put another nail in it and I tied a bit of string to it, and pulled the string tight, I pulled it across the room and put another nail in the windowsill. And so now there's this shelf that wants to fall over but can't because it's tied to another wall. Um, so that was, uh. You, so you spent most of this, the 80s <laughs> running around London <laughs> and collecting debris and making your home out of it. You sound like a womble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't shaped like one until I was 32. And you, and this is kind of, uh, the, you were making everything except a living. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. right. So, so I thought, right, how do I make a suit? I thought, well, I used to go to the library and learn, I don't know, I, I can make a suit. You know, mm. I, don't, I don't want to do it like other people, I do it differently. Do it so, so my method for making this made to measure suit, um, <laughs> was I got one of the sets of curtains and laid them on the floor. Right. I laid down on the curtain and drew round my legs. Right. Okay. Hang on. So you were making the trousers first? Yeah. So I thought, hold on, that's just one side of the trouser. So I laid down another curtain and drew around my legs again. And I thought, right, I cut those out. So now I've cut out two leg shaped curtain yeah. pieces, right? I put them together, sewed them up. Of course, it was nowhere big enough. Of course. Because not. I'd left no room, right? Yeah. So I tried to squeeze into them. I mean, they look like jodhpurs. They look like tights. Yeah. Okay. So I thought, oh, this is really hard, right? I pulled them off again, right? I thought, how oh, am I going to make the jacket? I didn't. I just used one of the curtains as a cape. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, I mean, I look like a gay Hamlet. Uh, I, I mean, it's ridiculous, right? So what I did was... Uh, did you squeeze into the trousers? You wore the trousers? I, I sort of squeezed them. I couldn't wear them, though. Yeah, I swear. Yeah. So what I did was, um, I rolled it up and shoved it under the chair. You sh- what, you rolled up what, sorry? I- so the suit I made. Jane came in about a few days later. She went, what's that? I said, that's where I had to go at the suit. And she pulled it out. And, you know, died laughing. The idea that this, that this, this man sat down and drew round his legs <laughs> to make <laughs> some trousers. But you, well, firstly, why did you not just throw it away? Why did you stash it under the... I don't know, because I thought... And you were watching TV on the sofa and she was a foot higher than you. <laughs> and she thought, what's going on here? And there was a suit stuffed. I mean, why not just throw it away? I don't understand. I don't know. That's what you do, isn't it? You think, oh... Maybe well, what I f- again, we were talking before about the fact that you used to be very thin, uh, and now you're very fat. Mm. And they seems like two different people. Well, not very fat. Oh. Well, uh, most people would say you are. Yeah. But, um, but wearing black. It, it seems as though you were also an idiot when you were younger. I mean, like, because pr- you're a smart man now. I don't, well, I know. Why I just, would it not occur to you that you couldn't make your own suit? Because I've always thought I can do anything. I've always thought, well, I can make a suit. Of course I can make a suit. I'll be brilliant at that. I'll yeah. make a suit. And it, it took me, it took me getting fat to realise the world doesn't lay down to you. Yeah. I, I thought, well, I'll never be fat. I will never be fat. Look yeah. at me. Look at me. <laughs> you know? So I suppose... And even that, as you were getting fat, that must be the mirror. <laughs> no. James, so, problem with the mirror. No, at least I can put eyes on myself as soon as I started getting fat. I started saying I was fat before I was fat. Yeah. Because when you've been really thin, you know, yeah. um, I, I, I mean, I couldn't get anywhere near those curtains now. No, oh, I couldn't, I, they, they wouldn't go past my ankle now. You kept them. <laughs> yeah, they're under the chair. Yeah, yeah. You, uh, and you sit, of course, uh, if someone comes to the door and you can't be bothered to reach for your pyjamas, maybe just wrap the curtain around you. I just put, pop the curtain yeah. around me, yeah. I could probably make a pair of pants out of them. I mean, soon I will be in nappies, which would be easy to make. Yeah. So, but when I'm older, and Jane goes, just off to work. Where are those pillowcases? Doesn't matter. 
Doesn't matter. I need changing. God. Food's too nice, though, isn't it? That's that's where the where the problem is. Well, yeah, some food. Uh, well, no, a lot, a lot of food. More food's nice now. I, I find that I eat because I go, that's nice, rather than I'm hungry. Oh that yeah, to be the I stopped eating when I was hungry. Um, when I was about twenty nine. Yeah. I used to. I, oh, I've got to eat now. I've got other stuff to do. We got to eat. Yeah, shove it in, right? And then uh, that I, I've never. I've never only ate because I was hungry for uh, many, many years. But, but it's not just that either, is it? Like we've got mates who've like had a kid now, and that's eating stuff. That seriously, I'm not. I'm not joking. That is having stuff that I've never had, and it hasn't even got teeth yet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what sort of things are you talking about? Mango. I only had that. <laughs> I, had, I had mango about a year and a half ago, and it's all right. I mean, it's not one of my favourite. Is it fruit? Yeah. But there's so much other fruit that's that's better. Go on. Yeah, I think. What's better than the mango? The banana springs to mind, the strawberry. Just, I, I like, I like the ones that you can just go, I'm nipping out, what can I take with me? I'll have an apple. Well, the banana's the best, because it's got its own that's, little carry case. Yeah, yeah that's alright, but they're saying that, you see, this is why we've got more fat people. In supermarkets now, you can buy cut up apple. In a bag. Really? That's, that is pretty that's lazy, lazy, isn't it? That, that is, is lazy. lazy. Well, again, I've got to confess that I have my portions of fruit, first thing in the morning, um, liquidised. Yeah. I have a smoothie, I put all the fruit in there, I drink it. I'm not chewing. If you want me to eat fruit, I'm not chewing it. At the Steve. end of the day, food's nice. Yeah. There's loads of it. Mm. Well. No, there is. In the Western world there is, yeah. yeah. That's what I'm saying. But in the Western there's world there's not. Yeah, but okay. this is the whole point, isn't it, about the, the gluttonous West, is that we are indulging ourselves. Yeah. If yeah. we were scrabbling around starving, like a third world country, we wouldn't be in that situation. Well, there's but all we're the... drinking the fizzy lemonades exactly, and Exactly, the there's loads of it. And now, every time I buy something, it's a two for one. So you end up buying more than you need, and then Suzanne's always saying, eat this ham, will you? It's going off. <laughs> I don't even want it. <laughs> Why is she buying so much ham? Because it's two for one offer. We don't need two lots, but the person at the till goes, you know, this is two for one, you go and nip back and get one. And I know you get what you mean, it, though. I mean, it, it, it yeah, they never do half price, they do two, two for, for one. one. Exactly. They did that with the meal once. We were in LA, and we had a meal, and they said, uh, you know, it's happy hour, it's two for one. So, I went, well, can we just have one each, I and mean, we've got to give it to you, and they brought two meals for everyone. Yeah. It was ridiculous. That's mad. Yeah. I am. Of course but, you do. I'll tell you another problem that I've worked out. Yeah, it might, might make a slight difference on fat people. Don't put a light in a fridge, because that's just that's just that night when they get peckish, mm -hmm. they can see everything that's in there. Don't put the light there. You don't need a light in a fridge. There's no lights in other cupboards. Yet where there's food, it's like fat is getting up at four in the morning. What can it have? What's that at the back? Get rid of the light. They'd eat less. That might there might be some logic in that. That's interesting. Well, what's it there for? Tell me what that light is there for. They say turn off your standby light. Yet you've got a light in your fridge. Well, no, it's showing you off. where tomatoes is. You know, but it's chocolate. turned off when you shut. The, you don't, the light's not on when the door's not open. Yes, but a fat person who's always got the fridge door open. <laughs> 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 so what are you saying in a way is that the free market capitalism, being what it is, which has allowed companies, food manufacturers to make them more full of more salt, more fat, and in order to well, attract you, in order to make more profits, it's actually resulting in obesity. I was in a cafe, right? Um, I normally like to go in there, and I might have beans on toast, mm. uh, cheese on top. Tea. I might have a bit of cheese. Yeah, cheddar on top. Uh, only if the offer. I sometimes sort of think I shouldn't have it, so mm. I'll only have it if they say you want cheese. Oh, okay. And then it's down to their problem. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's kind of like they made me have that. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sat in there. Look how Ricky's glazed over, just thinking about cheese on mm. toast now. I'm sat in there. This little fella, I'd say he was from like Africa or something. Yeah. Uh, came in had a little top hat on. <laughs> suitcase and red jeans. Dead happy he was. Uh, I think he just turned up to London. It's his first day out, and he's probably thinking, "I can't believe me, look, look at the choice here." Anyway, the difference was All conjecture. Yeah, All yeah, yeah. The on. difference was he went in and he said, "Have you got any porridge?" He asked for two bowls for the price of one. There was a little bit of a a kerfuffle. Yeah, a little bit because he couldn't understand why you've got loads of porridge. Oh, give me two portions. But the, what, what, what I found interesting is, he didn't want to go for the donut or the pastry, because in his country they don't they don't have it. Mm. So food where he's from is for what food is for, isn't it? Giving you energy. Mm. Yeah. Here it's not about that, is it? No. You go, oh, I'd, I'd love a little uh, muffin. So I just found I just found it interesting. That's all my point is that he could have anything. He's come over here. He's in London. 
Yeah. Got loads of stuff on offer. Yeah. He still wanted his porridge. Do you think, uh, that, well, firstly, do you think perhaps he had travelled from the past <laughs> <laughs> in some kind of time machine? <laughs> But secondly, do you think that now that he'll have a, he'll, he'll have a, his first taste of a donut, won't he, or a pan au chocolat, do you think you'll get the taste of it next time you see him? Well, maybe. That's, that's yeah, how it works, isn't it? I mean, out. why do I like... Hey, well, next time we're going to go, hello, usual. No. Chef de porridge. I want a donut. That's, that's what happens, isn't it? You try one. Uh, it's like that the people I'm talking about who's had a kid and always giving it mango. They haven't let it add a burger yet. Um, it hasn't got any teeth. Burgers aren't. I don't mean a, like a, a, a proper beef one. I mean a, like a takeaway one that's pretty soft. It's all about a mixture. You need a mixture in your body. You need to have, like I've told, said to you before, I get an urge for things that I don't even know about. Do you know what I mean? What, like what? Anything. The one that always surprises me are plums. <laughs> <laughs> because I shouldn't get an urge for plums. I don't like them enough, but if I pass them in a supermarket, I go, I want them for a bit. Yeah, that, I think you need that. And I go mad. I'll eat a full packet in a day. I'll eat like six and get belly aching that, and I know I shouldn't overdo it with them, but it's just like my body. He's is, like a creature, isn't he? My body just calls out for stuff. It doesn't, Carl. No, he feels that way because I wouldn't normally buy him. My favourite fruit, I, I like an apple, love a banana. Mm. I've got into um, blackberries. Yeah, <laughs> quite expensive, but a bit of a treat. Um, people paid money for this podcast. <laughs> yeah. A man just listing his favourite fruits. <laughs> yeah, Graham, not included. But. Are you a fan of the gooseberry? Don't know if I've had them. You've never had a gooseberry? They're very, very tart. They they're are so very bizarre. They're, they're, they're they like, like, a, in... uh, like a green testicle. They've even got little hair on it. A gooseberry is like a really crispy, plump little berry, but it's very, very, um, very sour. sour. I mean, you've got to have it in pies with sugar and stuff. I bet yeah. my godson's had one. He's only one and a half. I bet he's already had a gooseberry, and I've never had one in my life. Right. He'd never said it before, and he said gooseberry. <laughs> he decided that's the way to pronounce it. Gooseberry. What's that? What's a gooseberry? A gooseberry. Well, okay. I'd never heard it before, but I'm going to say it now, but I'm going to say it my way. Gooseberry. I've never had one. You need, I don't, you need... I don't feel like I need another fruit, that's the thing. I think there's plenty of fruit out there. Bananas, apples, oranges. If you get a little bit sick of oranges... <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a big fan of the satsuma. Easy to peel. What I don't like is the big oranges you have to peel them, um, you get it on your... You know. I know the ones I eat when I'm in the bath. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's just so you it. just dunk under the water afterwards that's and you're clean again. If I'm going to have a bath, yeah. Then, yeah, then that's what you do. You so it's two it. treats. It's an orange and a bath. I mean, that's amazing. That's an amazing thing to look forward to. Don't you think you've blown that for when you're old, when you're 74, and I go, I'll tell you what, Carl, lovely treats, a bath and an orange. Done it! I did it when I was 36! We've got plenty of fruit. They can't get rid of fruit quick enough. There's loads of stuff with fruit in now. Shower gel with kiwi in it. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you, they can't get rid of it because it's too much. So they just go, what can we do with all this stuff? We'll stick it in there. Orange <laughs> juice. I, t I had orange juice sort of cordial. Yeah. Tastes a bit weird, isn't orange? Sneaked a bit of pineapple in. Orange and pineapple. They can't get rid of the stuff. What's up with that? Talking yesterday, um, to, uh, Matt Robinson, the, the guy I did the, the film with that you came over and um, did a part in that we, we've cut. Um, and, uh, his dad as a, as a doctor and, um, um, used to, used to go around the world and stuff. And when he was about 10, he went on holiday and they were driving through Indonesia to, to, to get to somewhere else. I forget where, but they came across this village where he said the spiders have won. Okay, they drive in. As you're driving in, he could see these things sort of hanging from the trees and the sort of telegraph poles. And as they got closer, he realised they were just big spiders. They just made webs everywhere and he could see them on the street, okay? He said it freaked him out. They parked up in this, this uh, the sort of like the high street and he said he got out and they were running on the pavements like pigeons and rats, just running everywhere. Oh, he said the kids were playing with them. The kids were playing with them. There was no one else freaked out less. He said he oh. ran to the restaurant. They had to stop. He ran into the restaurant, freaked out. He got into the restaurant and there was a tarantula on the floor. And he ran back in the car and, and he said, he said later to his dad, was that a dream? And his dad went, no, it's true. You know, it's, it's a real place, right? He was telling me, I said, that sounds the worst place in the world. He was looking it up. He was trying to Google it and he put in, he can remember the name of this place, Indonesia. And he put in Spider Village, Indonesia, right? And he couldn't find it. But another one came up in Cambodia, and 
it was there, and it was, he said it was exactly the same, just as bad, a place where just spiders have won, okay, but in this place, they eat them. They eat the spiders, the local yeah. inhabitants eat the spiders? Yeah. Wow. So, it's just, this town is just dense with spiders, it's they're just everywhere. Dense, they, they're just happy there, no one's killing them, no one's doing anything. But are you just treading on them as you walk down yeah, the street? Yeah, he said oh. it's just, they're just, they've just taken over. There's a place in, off Madeira, they called Spider Island, where no one lives there, but, um, with absolutely no predators, there's just there's just millions yeah. of spiders, but no one lives but there. How do you prevent the spiders? You know, when you're sleeping, crawling in, getting in. You your don't. Nose they and just they just put up with them. I sp I suppose it's that you know they're they're no weirder than any other insect or pest or whatever you you call them. It's just I suppose because it's you think of spiders as loners. Yes. And they're the, and they're the the top sort of phobia, and it seems weird that they're almost treated like pets. But isn't that a weird place, though, that you drive in and it's just, oh, hello, welcome to Spider Town. I couldn't be dealing with it. I mean, my mum wouldn't be that bothered. She's still got that one that's under the telly. She's had that for ages. And my dad threatened her that he was going to kill it because he's sick of it. She's put a bit of uh, Tipex on its back. So she knows. What? So she knows. Well, how many spiders are there? What, you think you'd kill it and then replace it out of guilt? It's not like a budgie. No, but you can sort of say, oh, I don't know, it's gone. And then if one turns up again, he'll go, your spider's back. Yeah. But now she's marked it. What, so, hang on, it, it has Well, a, that's, that's weird. It has a web underneath the telly. It's always under the telly, I don't think it bothers with a web. But it's, what do you mean she keeps a spider under the telly? It's just there, and she's sort of like, it's not a problem, they get rid of flies, they're not dirty, it just Well, it doesn't get there. rid of flies if it sits there watching Coronation Street. It doesn't Street. do much, honestly, it can be there in a corner, I don't know what it does, I don't know, I, 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 it just sits there. But she likes the fact that it's there. It's that thing, innit, of, uh, older people like that, don't they? They don't like change. It's like part of the family, you know, all the kids have left home now. She's got this little spider with the tipex on its head. <laughs> <laughs> I like the way that she went into a drawer, she had an idea, she was worried about it, she was worried about her husband killing it, I know, this is for your own good. Yeah. Get tip X, pop that on you. Yeah. And you've been round there with the spider that doesn't freak you Well, I'm out. going round this weekend, so, uh, but I used to always sit on the floor to watch the telly. Yeah. Now it's like I'm not sitting on the floor. You'd be watching Spider-Man, it would be criticising, well that wouldn't happen. What does your mum think of it? Does she think it's like a little pet or she doesn't want to get rid of it? I think it is a pet because, like, you know, she's had loads of cats, she's had dogs, she's got a budgie, and now my dad's sort of saying don't get any more pets because it means we can't go on holiday. Right. A spider can look after itself. <laughs> I love the idea! Someone say, um, do you mind coming around, we're on holiday for a week, do you mind coming around with a fly every two days? <laughs> yeah, I, I just, uh, just keep an eye on it. I mean, I, I thought Spider Island was weird, but keeping a spider under the telly with Tipex on it, as yeah. a pet. I, um, was watching a documentary about, uh, you know, Nazi Germany and everything, and I just realised that I felt guilty for quite a while because whenever I see a programme about the Nazi plan, I always take a certain solace. Like, I'm slightly smug that I know I'd have been okay because I'm tall and blonde, almost blue-eyed. Yeah. Pretty much fully functioning, except the uh, the eyes are a bit poor. The Aryan race. And the, that's what they were after, wasn't it? The yeah. sort of Superman, the Aryan. He'd, what do you mean? Yeah. Well, Steve would have been the Aryan pin-up. Yeah, I'm like a kind of poster boy oh, for no, you Nazi Aryan. You wouldn't. You wouldn't, you wouldn't have been a pin-up. No, but you know, like, a, you know, they'd have certainly, they, I'd have been, maybe not on the posters, but I'd certainly have been down the recruitment office. Really? Signing people out there to say, we want you to look like this. So what do you think, so? So Steve goes, they go, okay, we want someone tall, blonde hair, blue eyes. Someone goes, I know the person. He's not only, he's really tall. Um, he's got really sort of striking eyes and is quite blonde. Uh, and they go, get him here. What do you think? He walks in, Hitler sees him, all the generals go, Hitler would love me. Do you want, do you want everyone to look like this? Thoughts, Carl? If you turned up, they'd go, hang on a minute, this doesn't match. <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? You what are you talking about? No way. No way. He's I am definitely, I am an ideal Nazi. I, I, I think someone would sort of go, hang on, I think there's been a mistake here. <laughs> No, that's bollocks. <laughs> that is absolute nonsense. I guarantee that I would have been one of the most popular Nazis. Did they stick with that? Did they sort of, was that the rule? Was, or did they see someone like you and go, hang on, we need a lot more on this list because I've just seen something out there that ticks all the boxes and it's a little bit, a little bit off. No. Well, do you know what? You can laugh, because, but you, what would they have made of you? 
You'd have been straight <laughs> against the wall, mate. No, but I, I've been alright, because I'm, but Hitler was a bit like me, wasn't he? Yeah, you'd have been like a slightly five, eight, dark Hitler. hair. I mean, he made me laugh, Hitler. Doesn't make many people laugh, but. No, uh, no, but do you know what I mean? He's going, oh, we've got to be blind. I go, hold on, whoa, Adolf, take a look at yourself, son. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, but he was, you know, he was aspiring to something more like me. Well, at least dye your hair. Why didn't he just at least peroxide it? If I said to Hitler, we've got to do this image, right, because people are laughing at you, because you're going around saying you want tall, blonde-haired, um, uh, blue-eyed fellas, and you're a, a little short, um, uh, brown-eyed, um, black-haired fella. Right, first of all, okay, put these contact lenses in. Little, little blue contacts. Oh, look at that, your eyes pop. Lovely. Okay. Um, let's dye your hair, peroxide that, maybe, you know, like Dave Sylvian, give him a little quiff. Okay? Now, Some right? build-ups in his shoes. Yeah, some Cuban heels, some high, maybe high heels. Right, now go out there. Now go out there. That well, would have been an extraordinary look if he had, if that was the man that we knew and feared, given those speeches. Peroxide hair, yeah. Cuban heels. Wouldn't I'd have been out, imagine I'd have been out of, I'd have found Anne Frank in a second, just passing by, oh, yeah, here in the top yeah. window, in the attic window. He would have had to, yeah, he'd have gone, lads, don't bother going inside, go and look at this, get a ladder, here she is. Typing. Yeah. yeah. I'm not yeah. saying it's a good thing, Carl, I'm just saying that, you know, one can have these guilty thoughts. Only, only those things that I've said where I get an urge to slap a kid or something. <laughs> <laughs> when did you, when did this happen? There's just little things like that. The other day when I was in the park and there was a goose just sat on the edge of the pond and I just wanted to run up and kick it. It's because you're not allowed and it's there and it's almost like going, come on. You just want to give it a little boot and the same with babies sometimes, you just want to slap their head. Not hard. <laughs> But that, I'd say that's the that's the weird thing. I, I well, Ricky has that impulse when he sees you. I, know, <laughs> yeah. I, I don't have anything where I sort of, uh, you know, want to be German or something. That's too... No, I'm not saying I want to be German. I'm saying I feel guilty because when I see those things, I think, oh, I'd have been okay. Yeah. What would you have done, though? Do you reckon you'd have helped out or you'd have kept quiet, just done your bit? I'd like to think I'd be one of those people who would have pointed and said, no, you can't be doing this. This is out of order. But I know in my heart I probably would have just kept stum. Because, I, you know, I'd have liked the... Oh, he's already talking German. <laughs> I'd like the I'd like the uniforms. I'd yeah. have just kept my head down. No. Um, well, you might you might have had to to survive. Well, I, I just I think I, I think I'm living in the best time for me. I think if it was about you know ages ago or something, it wouldn't have been right. I think I've just been lucky. But if you were in one of those situations, whether it be Nazi Germany or anywhere else, where you see oppression going on, horrors, would you stand up and fight for justice, put your own neck on the line, or would you no. just keep quiet? What do you mean, keep your neck, what do you mean? Well, this is, you know, this is the thing, for instance... If I knew Anne Frank was in, in my loft? <laughs> well, yeah, would Perfect. You, yes, would yeah, you Yeah, if you knew it? Anne Frank was in your loft, and your dad came in and went, right, whatever you do, don't harbour any Jewish people, the Nazis are, right, uh, also they're looking for spiders under tellies, your mum, you, you and your mum sort of looked at each other, so, I, so, uh, what would you do? Um, you met a little German fella. Ah, oh, young Carl. Oh, it's, it's a little round-headed no, fella. No, I'd probably just go, no, I don't know. I don't know who's up there. Well, we are checking, and if if we find her, then you... Well, would... that's ridiculous, real. Well, what do you think, though? Of course, it was it was a threat of death. You, if you harboured someone, yeah, but that, was why say... it was so, that was why it was so heroic. Well, people on, let's, hiding Sorry, people. could we just have this conversation played out, please, Rick? Cool. You're, you're the German. Hello. Would... Hello, Carl. How are you? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, what's, ah, what's yes. the problem? You're losing your hair. You're stressed. A little bit, yeah. It's ah, quite times. Right, uh, it's not, you're not hiding anything from me, are you? No. Oh, okay. No, no one... When you're asleep at night, do you, do you hear as the creaks of the... anyone upstairs? Um, I'm quite a sort of, uh, once no. I get to sleep, because my restless legs and that, I'm normally oh. pretty tired, so I'm out yeah. like a light. Um, if I came round, could I look in the attic and if I find anyone... Listen to you, I've got to go out, I mean... Well, I tell you now, if I go on and find someone, uh, I will, I will kill you. Well, mm. I, I don't know if anyone's up there. I wouldn't say, it's his job, I'd say, you go and have a look. Yeah, but well, don't say that, you went to be protecting her. Just say, you No, you've got to get him off the go set, you've got to say, no, she's not there, I just checked, don't worry about that, listen, I wouldn't lie to you. You'd say- But this is the point, Cole, are you willing to put your life on the line for someone else? And I think fundamentally- Not for, be. not for, not for her. I Why? Not for her. She's got her whole life to live. What's she's she a done? talent. She's writing. You're not doing anything. What are you doing? Writing. Staring at her. She's hands. innocent. More like she's innocent. I'd say what? I'd say Anne. I'd go up. Anne. Yeah. Uh, listen, they've been again. 
I think you should move out because this is sort of dragging. It's stressing me out. They keep knocking. And I'm going to get dragged down with you. So can you can you move out of the loft now? You've been here a few weeks. But that's it's no point. sort of life, Anne. You've been up here. You might as well be a, 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 some sort of moth. <laughs> There's no light. You sat there writing. So I don't know what you're writing. You've been up here for weeks. What are you writing about? I've kept a diary, and it's a bit of a struggle. You haven't been out. So can you just move, please? <laughs> that's what you do, is it? <laughs> but, I don't know how much you're meant to do. But this is the point, isn't it, Carl? It's about what are you willing to do? People, during that time, protected people at their own expense, at their, their own personal risk. They went through, they lied, they got food, they forged documents for them, they tried to sneak them out of the country, they did mm. incredible acts of heroism yeah. to help other people. And you're, and you're doing you're nothing. You're gonna kick her out on the You're street adding to it. Weeks. You're adding to All it. All I'm saying is, I'd say, Anne, I think, I think they think you're up here now. I think it's mm. best if you move on. I right. don't think you'd have I even can't, welcomed her I in can't, the first place. I can't, leave, I can't leave here. Well, you, I tell you what, I think he's, he's finding something a bit suspicious and he's gonna come up, so I have warned you, Anne, don't moan, and I'd, I'd leave her to it. And then yeah, if you turn up again, I'd go, go and have a look. Well, no, because then you'll still get done. I won't get done. You are, you've harboured her now, you've harboured her now, you're in trouble. So either go through with it and protect her, or stitch her up and get yourself out of What are you gonna do? I'd say, right, Anne. Listen. Go on. You've had the one conversation, she's not listening to you, she's busy, she's writing. Um. How are you getting up there? It's just a little, what's it, ladder? What are they called? A loft ladder. Yeah, a loft ladder thing. I right, can okay. I go up there, give it a bang. Right. Hang on a minute, she says, stop her writing. What do you want? Well, what- Are you down with Carl? What are you doing? I go, I'm talking to Anne. Who? Anne Frank. Who's Anne Frank? The woman in the loft. Well, we, what? Well, you're not harbouring Jewish people, are you? I don't know what she is. She's just up there all the time. <laughs> I didn't know she was Jewish. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't but... know she was Jewish, you know. I just sort of, she'd just be there. She, I'm talking about me mum and dad, it's me mum and dad's house. Yeah. I'm younger. Yeah. There's a woman in the loft. It's just the norm. Right. <laughs> it's just the norm. Right. Well, it must have been, with all the Jewish people around. How's she Everyone getting Everyone must have had a Jew in the loft. Who's- <laughs> But you, oh, you, God. you, no, you're like getting it last. Oh, yes. What's oh. interesting though is that you've, you've deliberately massaged this now to absolve yourself of responsibility. Suddenly you've made yourself a kid and it's not your responsibility. Yeah. Right? We are asking you, the adult Carl they Pilkington. They all said that. Adult Carl Pilkington, are you willing to put your neck on the line? And you're right. not, you're a- Suzanne so least... brings them someone and go, right, this, this, they're being persecuted, they're after, right? The mob. Okay, forget, forget, it did, not that's right. Someone's after, right? Um, they've just put out, I said, look, we've got a hider. If they find her, they kill all three of us. Right, can we hide her here, Carl? Oh, she's got nowhere to go. Let's, let, 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 let's at least take the risk. Well, let's set some rules. Before. Go on then. Right. How long are you gonna be in the loft for? Uh, it might be a year. Uh, it's a long time, that. I know, but quick, where, quick, they're coming, they're coming! Where have you been? Quick, quick, in here, right, in here, right, do, 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 do. Right, Carl, do you answer the door and go, she's in here, boys, or do you go- Just no, stick her in the loft a minute. Okay, okay, she's in the loft, okay. Hello. Hi, um, Hi. uh, I'm gonna kill you and your girlfriend, okay, unless you tell me now, yeah. is there someone in your loft, yes or no? Not that I know of. I'm gonna check in a minute. Wait a minute, what do you mean not that you- I'm another- another one. Okay. When you say not that you know of, I- I'm- I am gonna go and check in the loft. Are you happy for me to check in the loft? I can't stop you, can I? Oh, whoa, 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 we want a yes or no, son. Right. Well, what if I said no, what would happen? Well, we well, would storm we... in, and if we found anyone up there, we would presume you knew they were up there, and we would shoot you. Seems a bit unreasonable. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, I, what I'd say is, I'd say, it's weird you mention that, because there has been a bit of banging about in the loft, but I think it's coming from next doors. Have you been next door yet? No, we haven't. You gotta go around there. Alright, mate. Cheers, mate. No problem. Right. No. Shut the door. And then, that, that'd be that. I mean, it's... Well, there, it seems, it seems they quite make simple, it seem, actually. Yeah, yeah, they make it seem worse back then, but that's what age does to things, isn't it? People add bits on and all that. So what do you think? think we'll what do you think the close to, close to truth to the story is? I it's mean, just a woman, research, just yeah. a woman, uh, she did a diary and, uh, she bummed about in people's lofts without paying for stuff. It's like, uh, what do you call them? What do you, what do you call them when you, when you get people living in houses? Squatters. Yeah, she's basically just a squatter with a diary. <laughs> Unbelievable. Uh, that is the worst thing, thing I've ever I have say. ever heard anyone say. Unbelievable. Carl, 
We've been doing this for a long time and we're struggling for stuff. We uh, ripped off Room 101 last week, called it Room 102. You've done Brilliant. rock no busters. One that. No, exactly, yeah. So, uh, have you heard Desert Island Discs? Yeah. Good, let's do that. Right, um, forget the eight records, we well, can't play for, them anyway. We can't play them anyway. I know, but for people who are listening in other countries, they may not be familiar with those island discs. Oh, it's a, it's a, a programme, it's a, it's a, a real national institution here. They, they get, um, you know, prime ministers and leaders of men and really eminent people to go on and you talk about your life and you choose, um, your eight favourite, um, tunes, um, you, uh, you take a, a luxury item and, um, you're allowed to take uh, any book. I did it. I, I, I was, I was uh, very, um, very privileged and, and honoured and very flattered to be asked to do it myself um, last year. Um, apparently, uh, they said, "What book would you take?" And she went, "You, you, you get the, um, you get the Bible." I went, "Well, good. I want you to take toilet paper then." Um, and I, I took a book. Um, I think a tabletop book of art. Why would you take that? Oh, oh so much. you can't take anything that's useful. It's just, you know, it's, it's, you know, it's, and your luxury item, you can't, I took a vat of Novocaine. I thought if I get toothache, I'm sipping on that till I die. If I'm stuck here with nothing to do, I've got eight records, I'm gonna be sick of them. That's the thing. I'm looking at art, I'm le at least I'm looking <coughs> at something, you know. What book would you take, though? <coughs> well, I wouldn't take an art book anyway, I know that. Right, okay, because so come on in, one book. You're gonna get sick of it, you're gonna get sick of it. Right, one book. You can't get sick of art, either. You okay. can. You can. You can have a brilliant <sighs> picture on your wall, but eventually, remember what I've said to you, mm. your eyes get bored of anything. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember him saying that. I think I blanked out. I think he came in one ear straight out the other. Well, that's <clears> why relationships break up, <clears> isn't it? Because the, the eyes get sick of looking at that other person, and you go, my eyes want to change. That's what it's all about. Me mm. eyes want to change. Mm. Okay, come Sorry, on love. Fucking hell, choose a book to I'd take. I'd probably take a dictionary or something like oh, that. Oh, that's ridiculous. Why? Why would you take a dictionary? Just because I'm not that good with words. But who, why do you want words for? You're not talking to anyone anymore. You don't have to worry about the vocabulary. You have to worry about... Oh, but there'll be a lot of talking to yourself, probably. It'd be nice to sort of. Oh, so you're me. gonna bring yourself up on your grammar, are they? You're talking <laughs> to yourself and you go, oh, Carl, you're an idiot, you don't say it like that. That's well, if you've up. got to talk to yourself, it'd be nice to have. Why are you someone... talking to yourself, you maniac? Because there's no one else about. Yeah, but you don't open your mouth and actually verbally talk in order to talk. But also, what does it matter if you've got a dictionary or not? Who's arguing with who? Because sometimes I feel frustrated when I don't, I can't get my point across. But it's just you! Exactly, you already that's know even your more point. annoying. So, Look so how you're getting annoyed now. You're annoyed with me because I can't explain what I mean. Yeah. I don't want to be annoying myself. <laughs> Why would you be annoying yourself? But you'll already understand your point. You don't need to vocalise no, it. sometimes I think through what I'm saying. Yeah. And I think, does that make sense? And sometimes I'll go, no, it doesn't. And I'll go, why is that? And then you, you're working it out in your head. Now, if I've got a better vocab, I'll have a good little chat. <laughs> a good little <laughs> what? chat with yourself. Carl, you already on a desert island. You've got there. You're not reading the Bible. You get a dictionary out, so you get a better vocab, so you can have a decent chat with yourself. What are you saying? It becomes a point. If you're not keeping yourself interested in anything, your brain's going to turn to mush. Now I'm I'm I you feel. I'm teaching my brain stuff, keeping it active. Mm. The only thing you've got on that island mm. is your imagination, mm. and your thoughts. Now, if you can make those imaginations and thoughts better, which you do with language, you're going to have a better time, aren't you? Well, no, a thought is never restricted in your own brain by vocabulary, is it? Of course it is. No, well, no, you if you've you had don't... the thought, you've had the thought. You don't go, hold on, I'd have a thought here, but I can't think of the word. You don't think in language in that same way, do you, really? You think more conceptually. When someone came up, I, oh, guess what? I've just found the cure for, oh, I can't think of the word. Forget what? It, I, I just worked out the cure for, eh? I can't think of the word. Let's look it up. What is it? Cancer. No, but just to think, language is a powerful thing, isn't it? Yeah. Um. Oh, he's run out of words. You see, this is what I'm saying. It's sometimes difficult for me to get my point across with what I mean. Yeah, but that's fair enough if you're communicating, say, in this environment, and it's, dare I say it, perhaps a shame that you didn't read a dictionary before we started doing the podcast and all the broadcasting, but anyway, you've waited here on a desert island with no other well, fucker uh, around. Well, no, no, well, I, I think uh, by then, well, by the time you get shipwrecked, there will probably be a few more entries to the dictionary. Um, grippage, <laughs> foodage, <laughs> rumminging, <laughs> replenishing. But, but, so what? All words are made up. Orange. 
one day someone went, what? He's got a head, that's, he's got a head like something. He's got a head like a fucking what? I don't even know what. He's got a head like a fucking what? Well, that's what I'm saying. Let's make up a word. It looks like a orange. Like a fucking red orange. No, orange. And the other thing is, say if I am captured. By who? What? By who? By a boat that's passing. Why you captured? You mean saved? All right, saved then, yeah. Okay. If I'm so- there you go again, you see. I went for captured instead of saved. <laughs> <laughs> you're captured but you're by not some pirates. talking to anyone, Carl, in your head. It didn't matter. You knew what you meant. When you sat there on that desert island, you thought, oh, if I'm captured by a boat. They didn't come over and go, hi, Carl, we've come to save you. You wouldn't go, well, no, I don't want saving, I want capturing. I go, right, sorry, wait for the next boat. It didn't matter. You knew what you meant. You'd go, help, and you'd get do on the you, boat. Do you think in, in words that you don't use? Unless you're specifically thinking about something you're going to say, maybe because we're doing some writing or whatever, we're not thinking in words, are you? You don't wander around thinking, ah, oh, today I feel so, oh, I don't know what the word is. Extremely. You, you know, you know, you just feel, you yeah. experience, you think, you don't, you're not thinking logically about words and sentence structure and all those other things. You don't, that's not how you operate. So if you're on a desert island having these arguments well, with yourself, unless you're, you're schizophrenic. You've only got yourself for company. Yes, but you if don't. If you bore yourself, what's the point? <laughs> What is the point, seriously? But how are you gonna, what, so you think you're gonna read that dictionary and you're gonna be better company? Cause you're gonna be impressing yourself with longer words. You're gonna go- Well why do people use big words? Because they can. But also, to impress themselves. I bet they slip no, no, their no, words no, in. To impress themselves, no. impress others. If a boat passes and they go, there's a fella over there on that island, let's go and get him. Now, the way I am at the moment, they'd go, you alright? And I'd go, you are? And they'd go, oh, don't stop. <laughs> Where? Imagine that! Whereas if oh. I sort of say something with a big word that I can't think of right now, they'll go, oh, who's that? He sounds like he knows his you who Anti-disestablishmentarianism! <laughs> get him on this boat now! <laughs> we what must have that wit! <laughs> <laughs> Alright, you, you <laughs> get <laughs> come through. But then I'm on the news and they go, oh, Carl, what was it like on the island? And I can start saying stuff. I can't. It was scrantharious! <laughs> <laughs> no, but then I think it makes it more interesting. Whereas at, the, at this moment in time, I'd struggle telling them what it's like. I like the idea of you trying to educate I love yourself. The idea. But do it now. Cause there's so many other books. If I'm stuck with one, okay, the dictionary. You've got a dictionary. What's your luxury item? What's your luxury item? Quick, let's get off this island. Come on. What did you take for your luxury? A vat of Novocaine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Some Revels, a big sort of bag. Big bag of revels. A big bag of revels. Just for variety. Well, there's no variety particularly in revels. They're You're all chocolate, aren't they? No, all different. You've got orange ones. You've got coffee, caramel, Malteser. That's it. That's your luxury. Sorry, is this podcast sponsored by revels? I mean, second Novocaine isn't great, is it? If you don't get toothache, you'll be going, "Why don't they bring revels?" <laughs> Thank you for listening. I mean, you are martyrs, saints and martyrs to have listened to this all these years. So that's it from us. Um, why don't you start again? Go back to the beginning and listen to all of them. The back catalogue, five series. See if you can find one wise word from Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. And if you listen to this in the future, whew, I'll tell you what, the world's gone downhill. Uh. No, it'll just be different. I don't think it'll go downhill. It's just gonna change and it things are gonna be different. We've talked about fat people. Uh is that a bad thing? Mammoths were fat, weren't they? Yeah. Uh then they died out, then you get the ice age. And then this has happened. It's all gonna happen again. That's what's gonna happen. Brilliant. You uh, just decided that now. Definitely. well, that's what happens, isn't it? A weed. A weed grows out of a crack, put weed killer on it. Two weeks later, it's back again. <laughs> That's what the world's like, a big weed. We're just a weed in the universe. <laughs> Good night, everybody. <laughs>